Oh my God. And this is a game right here, man. Everybody, man, y'all subscribe, man. Game time. <laughs> oh! <laughs> y'all subscribe, man. On today's part of my take, we've got a twofer for the people. We're finishing up our week-long uh, previews. We did NBA Monday. We did NHL Wednesday. Today we have college basketball with Mark Titus and Creighton head coach Greg McDermott, which is a great interview. Great dude. Uh, a lot of fun talking to him. We're going to talk about whatever else is going on. Maybe uh, J.J. Redick versus the world. Hank has his number five. Patriot of all time, according to Hank. We're going to do Fire Fest of the Week. And we are brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. We're excited to announce our partnership with DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings will be our one-stop shop for all things betting. This week, new customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 on any sport. That's a no-sweat bet. It's just like getting an offensive board, miss your first shot, you get another chance to score with a bonus bet back. You can also follow what all of your favorite Barstool personalities are betting on by joining the Barstool betting group in the social, social section of the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code TAKE. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours. Go download the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. I'll tell you right now, on Saturday, I'm going to be playing the entire college basketball board, so you can follow along. I will have all my picks on the DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, the Barstool Bet Group, so you can follow along there. Nothing better than a late February Saturday full slate, so go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code TAKE. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Go download it right now. Use code TAKE and you can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Today is Friday, February 23rd. And this has been just the JJ Reddick week. He's pissed he, off the entire world. It's, it's his world. We're just living in it. He pissed off Pat Bev. Pissed off Doc Rivers. Yeah. He pissed off. He pissed off uh, not ball knowers online. Yeah. So the fans. So when JJ says like I only get fifty thousand people watching an X's nose thing, I'm one of those because I know ball. Humble like, brag. That's what I want. I, now we like JJ Reddick. He's a friend of ours. He's a friend of the show. Um, but I feel like this is just JJ Reddick doing uh his full return to Duke form. Yeah, I think I, yeah, he's kind of doing a little bit of a. There's a couple things that he said that were, I was like, I disagree with that. But when he goes on first take, I think he's just playing up the fact that like everyone used to hate him and they see that face and they see him being like, I'm smarter than you, and it's like, oh yeah, that was that was Duke JJ Redick. I don't like him. I think it's it's more the the Duke JJ Redick in the mindset of like I'm I'm the only one that appreciates like true knowledge. Yeah. You guys don't understand true knowledge. Jay Billis does that from time to time, too. Yes. When he gets deep in his bag on that lawyer shit. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes we just want to watch people scream about the Cowboys at each other. Yeah, and it was it was an interesting um, week for him because he basically started the week. He bashed Doc Rivers and said, uh, you know, he always has an excuse, which I agreed with. Doc Rivers does have a lot of excuses. We played that on Wednesday. And then on, I think it was maybe Wednesday or Thursday, he went on first take and was like, why does everyone care about what I said about my former coach? Which, uh, yeah, of course, if a player calls out his former coach, like we just did an entire Robert Griffin the third versus Jay Gruden story arc. Well, this that's is like everyone will always tune in if a player's like my former coach, Johnny Manziel, just bashed Brian Hoyer, and people are talking about that. That is always going to be what people want to want to listen to. This is also the next iteration of saying something inflammatory, getting invited back on shows to defend your inflammatory thing, where now he's going back on shows and 
he's fighting back and he's like, this shouldn't be inflammatory. Yeah. Then the discussion becomes like, why aren't we as a society smarter about what we choose to watch in terms right. of basketball knowledge? Right. And I, 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 it's funny because in 2024, I would make the argument that fans are more knowledgeable than they've ever been in any part of like sports history. Yeah. There is countless things that you can watch if you want to learn more about the game that you love. Like just, it's the internet. There's podcasts, there's clips, there's everything is at your fingertips when it comes to becoming a more knowledgeable fan. Unfortunately, what JJ misses is we are fans and fans are a lot of times dumb. I'm count counting myself and we like drama. We like to, to make knee jerk reactions. We like to have stupid debates with our friends. It's not hard to figure out that like we want to be entertained. We're, we're, we're dumb creatures who want to be entertained. Sports should be entertainment. Being like, why isn't anyone watching my Zion Williamson uh, primary ball handler clip? Yeah, I guess I'd watch it. It'd probably be interesting. But, yeah, I also want to debate, like, you know, uh, will LeBron go back to Cleveland? Yeah, also the people that end up paying J.J.'s salary are mostly the ones that just want to talk about LeBron, the Dallas Cowboys, the Yankees, and the Dodgers all the time. It's it's like one of those things you can't fight it. That's why this show exists, is we, we're, we're dumb sports fans that were lucky enough to, like, be sitting in these seats talking into a microphone, and we also understand that most sports fans want to be entertained and have sports be an escape from everyday bullshit we can do both sides of the coin too because right now we're debating whether or not we want people to be smarter about sports whether or not they should want to be smarter and it got distilled down to duke sucks yeah duke does suck <laughs> so yeah that's that's the main takeaway that you can get i do think he is doing a little bit of a bit when he goes on first take it's the heel in him he's being like, the like the yeah professional wrestler like, and i you guys, you guys you guys don't deserve me on TV. right i kind of like that yeah though. i like like maybe you're a little bit of a masochist when you watch tv sometimes I like it when uh, when experts on TV are like, you piece of shit walk me right now. I, I am so much smarter than you when what? it comes to all this stuff. I'm like, God damn, he's owning me. MJF is one of the most popular wrestlers in the world. He yeah. calls his fans poor constantly. Yeah. Like, we're we're all subs. We just want to be dumb. When, when, when Andy Kaufman went to Memphis and called everybody hicks and yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we want to be insulted, and then we want to get mad at you and be like, no, our conference is the best conference. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Choke me out, JJ. Yeah. We need him to go. On Step Pat on Pat me Pat. with some heels. Pat Bev, I think, is going to be on, uh, going to be in the office next Friday. He's going to come on PMT. Although I, I like what Pat Bev did. I don't have a problem with Pat Bev having Doc Rivers back because, like, one thing it's that you know about Pat Bev, if he's in your foxhole, he's in there deep. Yeah, real deep. And so he he signs with the Bucks, and immediately he's like, I'm riding or dying with Doc Rivers. Yeah, that's as simple as it is. Well, he's been Doc's guy for a long time. Yeah. Also, a bit wild to claim that JJ's career was saved by Doc Rivers. That. I liked it that, though because that, guess that to what me is like okay he JJ's been pretty good at shooting three pointers for his entire life but if you get to a take first it's just like yeah that makes sense Doc made you I JJ. didn't look up any stats behind it because then JJ got caught in a, a, a basically he got caught in his own trap because Pat Bev said something inflammatory and then JJ tried to back it up with stats that it wasn't true and it I saw the tweet and it was just too many numbers so I just passed right over it and I was like no I. Pat Bev was right. I yeah, think. there's just stats that normal people don't know how to read. Right. Yeah. I, well, right, I, right. He put a bunch of stats. I was like, I don't know if this is proving his point or not. I'm assuming it is because he posted them, but I don't know what any of this shit like, means. We are dumb. I, I mean that in like a loving way. Like I consider myself not the smartest person when it comes to the sports I watch, but I love watching sports. I love the drama of it. I love the sports. You put on a game, you don't know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of sports. Pat Pat's point was you blew a 3-1 lead to us, and that's a fact. That is a fact. That's, a fact. that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's basically checkmate. That's easily digestible. That's a meme. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wrapped him up in a meme and said, no, here's why you're wrong. And when I think JJ responded to him by saying, uh, Doc didn't save my career. I got offered that same year like a multi-million dollar deal for another team that I turned down. So it's like somebody else wanted me. At that point, you're like, well, actually, uh, I'm not poor. Here's a screenshot of my bank account. Yeah. And then Pat Bev wins that round, too. Yeah, yeah. So I, and at the end of the day, it's like this debate has happened many, many times over. I think like 10 years ago, it was a, a more it had more weight behind it because there weren't as many options for fans to find what they wanted in terms of content. Now, in this day and age, it's like th there's everything and 
guess what? A lot of times the most popular thing is the one that takes sports as entertainment and an uh, escape from everyone else. There's plenty to go around. Plenty to go uh, around. We, we should actually, we could get this even dumber with our analysis. Is J.J. Redick overrated as an announcer? Mm. I was going to say, do you guys think he's feeling himself off of his promotion from last week to the A-team? No, uh, I actually, no, no, J.J.'s awesome. Like, I, I, I yeah, really... I, I do think he's doing a character on first take. I, I no. swear to God, like, and I that might be just me... Growing up on, you know, the attitude era where I can just work myself into a shoot constantly. But if you watch it under the the idea that JJ is being like the Duke smart ass, I know more ball than you. It's great TV. He should show up next time wearing an ascot. Like really yeah. to ascot fake prescription glasses that he doesn't need. He should just wait till Stephen A like says something stupid and just shove a bunch of hundred dollar bills in his mouth. Or he should be like Stephen A makes a, a good point that JJ says, Do you know who my father is? Yeah. That would rock. Yeah, my dad's a lawyer. Yeah, he'll sue you right now. I, I'm, I'm all in for it. It's entertainment, and yeah, I like, I like, I like learning. I actually saw Dan Orlovsky would chimed in. He, Dan Orlovsky is a perfect example where Dan Orlovsky, when he started his career, I thought he was a little bit boring because he was trying to teach everything, and he started having more fun. And I think he's great. He's great at what he does. It's a little bit weird, but in a, in a good way. Weird but, is good. Weird but he's, plays. Yeah, he's showing it, like his personality, and he's like, I, I will stop when I see a clip of him teaching you know, a play or something. I'll watch it because I know it's not going to just be droning on like, this is what you should know as a football fan. Mm -hmm. There's a little personality into it. Yeah, you got I So I like both. I like it when Dan teaches me something, and I also like it when Mark Schlereth pulls up a clip. He's like, you have to play man football. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes it's just about being a man. We are that kid. Why not both? Yeah. Why not both? That's why we have guests on this show who can tell us smart things, and then it helps us even out the dumb things that we say. Where, where do you stand on this, Hank? Are you uh, are you standing behind your Duke brethren? Or are you on Pat Bev? The brotherhood. I mean, Pat Bev's my, my Barcelona brother. I kind of got to ride with him. Yeah. But I love J.J. Redick. Yeah. I don't. I, I never thought it was like a, like you got to, pick a side it was more just it was funny because he jj did a good job of basically dominating an entire week just based off his own takes hey jake can you put a reminder in the calendar next year uh the week after the super bowl say something really really inflammatory just absolutely take over the news cycle no no not the week after the after the super bowl. well the week after the super bowl is filled with post super bowl talk right so the, this so is a perfect week. week because there was yeah. no nba games for three days yeah before yeah right during the all-star break and maybe we can do this during baseball season too, at that at that midsummer swoon after March Madness. Yeah, yeah. Let's Bastard. say something really, really stupid and just get people angry. Yeah, and then just have, and then we'll come back on the next show and be like, "Well, what we said was not exactly what you think." Mm -hmm. And then say something even dumber, and we got them in a trap. Perfect. Yeah, I don't like when when shows do these type of like tricks to try to string everyone along and and get everyone like oh here's a cliffhanger you got to tune in next week hank do you have your fifth uh patriot i do the number five patriot of all time my number five patriot of all time you know what let's save it uh we'll save it for a little bit later in the show uh we have another thing we have to talk about big dom what's going on with big dom you see the report what report about Big Dom? So there was a report out of Philadelphia that I 100% believe. I do not care if this was made up. I don't gi I don't give a fuck. This is one of those things that like it, the, it passes the feel test for me. The report is essentially that Big Dom was a lot more than just a security guard. He was essentially Nick Sirianni's emotional support animal. And when he got suspended from the sideline, Nick Sirianni spiraled out of control was fighting with players, and Big Dom is the reason why their season fell apart, and I 100% believe it. I mean, we said this in real time. Yes. It was happening. It's like Big Dom, yeah, the whole vibe that he brings. I would not be shocked if, if Big Dom was like, have you ever seen that movie Flight with Denzel? He flies the airplane upside down. He's the drunk pilot. That one? Sully Sullenberger? No, anyways. I've uh, seen it. You saw that yep. one, so so uh, John Goodman in that movie was wait the flight the plane was upside down. Yeah, he he flew it upside down, then landed it, saved half the plane. He did a barrel roll. Did barrel roll seven forty seven. What was that game N sixty four barrel roll? Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Uh, Star, Star Fox. Fox. Yes, such a good game. Yeah, uh, such a good game. So so John Goodman is the banana boat guy that just shows up to calm Denzel down. He's got a briefcase filled with whatever he needs. I maybe Big Dom had like a pocket full of Xanax. It was like, hey, dude, just chill out on the sideline. But uh, yeah, you you need you need an a, another Italian to to calm down the first Italian. Yeah, like you can't have an Italian alone just on the sideline roaming around without an emotional support Italian. Maybe his mother. 
Yes, he should have brought his mom down on the should sideline. Some Sunday gravy. So uh, Big Dom, it would not shock me if he was uh, if he was a reason for Nick Sirianni flying off the handle. Do you think Big Dom enjoys this type of press conference or press coverage where it's like Big Dom no, is the reason no, for this? He thing? Hates not, not even a tiny little bit. He's probably calling up Putin, being like, "How do you get these guys killed?" <laughs> Uh, so what are your thoughts on these uh, on the Big Dom story? Max? I mean, it makes sense. It's, I agree with everything that you said. He He's a leader in that. You talk about a leader of men. Big Dom is a leader of men. He's he, been around the program for a really long time. He's seen the ups and downs. He's probably the most well-respected guy on that sideline. And when Big Dom tries to de-escalate, I don't think that's a word. No, a situation. You, 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 no that was, it, was it was a, a word. It was a Philly just, pronunciation. Yeah, you yeah. didn't say it right, but it was a word. Yes, yeah. De-escalate? De-es- de- de- De-escalate is what they say in yeah. South Philly, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, but I think people are like, all right, Big Dom said said to n- knock it off. Like, we got to knock it off. And without, ha- it's like there was no dad. It was like there was no dad to stop the fighting. Okay, so the question now, Max, is I think. Except I also agree with A.J. Brown. What did A.J. Brown say? <laughs> A.J. Brown. So A.J. Brown has a burner that is his burner it's like his handle with an underscore okay and he said wait aj brown has a burner so it wasn't aj Brown. so it's a burner but it's so people were like oh that's a fake that's a fake tweet but then people are like no that's his burner oh that's, that's actually awesome. a genius yeah, idea rules. yeah rules. To, to do like a fake account of yourself and correct be like, no you missed it that's just a, that's an imposter but it's actually you okay yes yeah, so. i gained a lot of respect for aj brown <laughs> yes. right now so I tweeted about it last night, and then I got people being like, oh, you're fake, and then people being like, no, that's actually real. Whatever. Okay, so what do you see? He said, said, Philly media is so lame. It's literally something every day. Then the fans be, be believe this BS. They really should start raising the prices of microphones and cameras because you people will say anything <laughs> for views. I see why nobody likes us because we don't even like us. Hashtag reality TV. So AJ Brown's basically trying to be Shkreli for podcasters. He's like, if we raise the price of these of these microphones, yeah. no one can podcast. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Uh oh, I don't I don't know if I agree with this, Max. We talk into microphones for a living. No, but I don't think he's talking about. He, I don't think he's talking about us. Just it's actually, that's yeah. great for us because no, we already have the microphone, so we can true. flip them. What if they break? I've only said positive things about AJ Brown. All right, so Max, here's the big dilemma that you have now, though. So Big Dom is the most important person in the Philadelphia Eagles organization. I think we can all agree on that. We all agree. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You need a big Dom for big Dom. I got the guy. The dude that's always the, the guy in the stands, the fan that has all the Philly mascots yeah. tattooed. With oh, the butthole. The belly button. The yeah. Fanatic, yeah. yeah, belly button has his nose. That Wait, should be big Dom's no, guy. No, no. See, the thing about big Dom is that he doesn't need the spotlight. Like, those yeah, guys all Max, need the spotlight. Max, you just found out what happens when big Dom gets suspended. So next time a Dre Greenlaw situation happens, you need a big dom. That for big was dom. anti-Italian discrimination okay. from the NFL. Fact, so you fact. need. So maybe you don't get an Italian to be big dom's big dom. So that way, that if they go to Italians, it, you know he the this guy, he's German. He can walk in and be like, "Hey, stop." Maybe not. He's not good at de-escalating. He's uh, Swiss. No, but if you're German, you could keep an Italian in your pocket. True. No, I think I want like a Greek guy. Like you want close, a Greek? Yeah, like close to Italian. But not quite Italian. Then he's gonna start taking payments under the table. Every that's dom, fine. that's fine. Every dom needs a sub, so you just get like a hoagie that he walks around with. Yeah, but you realize that you need a big dom protector because he's I'm, the most I'm, important piece. I'm willing to be the big dom protector. Okay, you you are you would get him you would get him more fired no, no, up. No, yeah, I was gonna no, say no, you're no, 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 no. you you definitely are someone who doesn't get angry easily. You would actually he would have to become your dad too. No. I, no, we don't need an Italian, Max. That's the problem. We have too many Italians on on the Eagles sideline. It's, it's a combustible situation. I think they maybe they need some wine. Yeah. Just calm down. Just have a nice glass of red. Maybe a cigar, get some cigars on the sideline. I don't know. Big Dom's an important piece of this of this program. And I I believe that he is sorry for his actions last year, even though it was bullshit and he should have never been punished. And I think that he knows that like he is important and can't and can't be taken off the sidelines again. Uh, yeah. So he, like I I think it's like a I don't I think it's more of an accountability thing and Big Dom knows that like he is now accountable. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing that your head coach is so emotionally fragile that bad. he needs a security bad. guard next to him bad. to keep him calm at all times? But then bad. the fact that it's Big Dom I kind of understand because if you, I, if we had a Big Dom we need a Big Dom for this podcast. If we had a Big Dom. <laughs> <Puck laughs> is our Big Dom. <laughs> Puck. Yeah. No. It's um. 
it really is one of those things that we, we, we said as a joke, but we were 100% serious at the same time, and we were right. Big Dom was the most important yeah. piece of this Eagles. He's holding that whole project together. Yeah. He gets shot in the stomach next you thing you know. The whole Esplanade falls apart. I mean, apart. PFT said he's coming on the show. Yeah, oh, he agreed to come on the show. Yeah, yeah we booked yeah. him. Do you think Big Dom's going to get maybe a little extra extra sauce, extra gravy? He little should. A little box of ZD out of this? He deserves it all. I agree. He should renegotiate his contract. Uh, I, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if, if the Eagles and Big Dom moved in other directions from each other just as a Commanders fan. What, That's how much I fear Big Dom. Do you think Big Dom, if like a team wanted to get Big Dom, how many draft picks would they have to give up? Ooh. Fifth rounder? No, I'd say I'd say sixth. I would additional six swap a seventh. You talk about the Caleb Will. I wouldn't take the Caleb Williams. You wouldn't take Caleb Williams nah. big dog. Do- nah. <laughs> On a rookie deal. Nah. Nah. Oh, the money though. I actually he's not crazy. Because I want Big Dom and I would maybe give up the first pick. Yeah, dude, get, you build around Big Dom. <laughs> we, oh. we got our, our franchise security guard. <laughs> Build around Big Dom. Well, it's a great T-shirt. It, it actually is. <laughs> and build the whole wall out of Big build Dom. Or, build around Big Dom. Yeah, work. build the whole airplane out of Big Dom. You give me fifty-three Big Doms, I give you a Lombardi. Is that easy? Easy. And Big Dom, to his credit, he did save your franchise quarterback from having a stadium fall on him. Yeah. Is he is the franchise quarterback? Well, that's a good question. He didn't look like himself this year. <laughs> he was hurt. Uh, there's something else going on in the sports world that I think we should talk about. What? Uh, we're on uniform watch in baseball. Oh, yeah. Big time. People yeah. are big mad about the new baseball uniforms. Fanatics got cheap. So it's Nike uniforms, and I, I read an article about it. I think I understand kind of how it works. Nike gets to design the uniforms. Then they send them to Fanatics to produce the uniforms. So Fanatics makes them. They put the Nike swoosh. They do all the uniform specs, and uh, they look cheap now. Like People are mad. Players are mad. Fans are mad. mad. I just saw today that players are – a little bit worried about their balls showing oh. in, these, in the new pants. And I saw one picture. It was some dude on the Wait, Giants. this is a way to grow the game. I, it might be a way to grow the game for yeah. sure. Uh, the only thing, while well, you look it up, the only thing I know about this whole story is people were blaming Fanatics, and then Darren Ravel tweeted right away being like, it's not Fanatics' fault, which just made me think it was 100% Fanatics. Yeah. That yeah. was all I got. You don't want Darren Ravel defending you. You're yeah. guilty as fuck. It's like yeah. if you have a lawyer wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah. You're like, that guy's guilty. Yeah, it was just instant. I was like, yep, Fanatics' fault. Okay, here we go. Here's uh, Casey Schmidt for the Giants, Big Cat. Look at this. Just balls. Oh, those are just, just two big balls. Just two big balls in these pants. He looks like Frank Gore. It's That's the on dick circle. That yeah. You can see. That's, uh, okay, so they got to figure this out. But this is actually a good, now if I'm going full wrestling brain, this was smart by the MLB because we're talking about him. That's true. Yeah, like, way to stay relevant, baseball. Way to stay relevant. Just make some shitty uniforms that have everyone's balls showing. Uh, Vogelback's going to look like Chris Christie at the NYPD oh, softball man, game. Oh, man, that's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a big problem. Yeah, but I what? actually can't. Oh, I should... So people are complaining. I wouldn't mind seeing. Schwarber probably has really big balls. Oh, he's got, yeah, he's, he's got a sack on him for sure. Respectfully, all due respect, I'd knock it out of the park. <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy. Don't they wear cups? He's not listening. No. Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah. Baseball players wear cups, though, right? Uh, I don't. Depends yeah. on the position. I would definitely wear a cup. I don't think, like, outfielders don't. I would definitely wear a cup. Max? No, nah, you don't wear cups. Unless you, oh, you're unless a catcher. You catch. Yeah, you're you a catch, catcher. You don't wear yeah, you don't wear a cup. I got hit, I've gotten hit, hit in the balls a couple times playing baseball. I think that's a little league thing. Well, you, got not- the, you got the. Were they the BMGs? Big meaty BMCs, clankers. Big, big meaty clackers. Uh-huh. Yeah, because cup is restrictive in running. It kind of is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they wear cups. But also, yeah, in Little League, you play on fields that have a lot of bad hops. And also, you you know, you're just not good enough to stop the ball that's going to hit your true. balls. Like, the you know, a third baseman is not going to let a ball hit his balls. Yeah, but have you guys seen the actual uniforms, like the tops? Yeah, they, they're terrible. The letters, that are, they don't, the letters are too small. So they everybody has seen uniforms that they buy from China, and they arrive, and you're like, well, that doesn't look like the real thing. Yeah. That's kind of what these are. Well, it's like, yeah, there's the, there's the $150 versions, or you could get the – Twenty five dollar right that aren't stitched and yeah they nice. they're not I saw the Mariners uh, patch on their arm and it wasn't embroidered and really yeah so it that, was just like it was it was ironed on so it's become such a story now that what's going to happen is people are going to find every single small part that's wrong with the uniform and it'll become another story and then it's just going to snowball and snowball and all we want to do change. is just fucking see how Zion Williamson is the primary ball handler that's it 
That's it. And now we're That's out all here sports fans talking want. about baseball. I want to know about the spin rate on, uh, <laughs> on Mike Clevenger's two-seamer. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, it's a good story, though. We also had uh, Johnny Manziel with an all-time quote. Uh, did you guys see this when he... Uh, yeah, he lost 40 pounds in, like, lost, three months. Yeah, and and, and Shannon, Shannon Sharp being like, how'd you do that? And Johnny Manziel, he just he was just as honest as possible. Cleveland. I was 170 pounds sitting in Vegas that August, that September, October, whatever it was later in that year. Forward? How you lose 40 pounds? You're on a strict diet of blow. That's <laughs> <laughs> so great. Yeah. Fucking strict diet of blow, dude. What do you want me to say? It's a fact. I hope he's not using it anymore because that that is a big problem if you lose 40, 40 pounds. pounds. And yeah. you're only like 210 pounds to begin with. It's like when David Bowie had a whole entire year where he was actually, he had to be fed like a baby. He, all he drank was milk and hot peppers yeah. and cocaine. Yeah. David Bowie also got so bored with having sex with women that he started banging men. Hey, listen, sex positive. Just went through every single hole. We're sex positive. Uh, all right, before we do, Hank, are you ready for your yeah number five? Wait, can we hold on to that for one second? Because Big Cat, I wanted to bring up, there's two more things. Oh, okay. Just real quick, the other big storyline, uh, Justin Fields, he went on the yes. St. Browns podcast. Yes. They asked him about unfollowing the Bears on social media. I was right. He said that he didn't want to see NFL highlights. Correct. He was bored of the Bears. Like, he, he just doesn't want to see Bears highlights when he's going on vacation. And he said sometimes the girl that you like the most is the one that you're not following. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. I, I didn't really understand that part of it. I don't follow Sidney Sweeney. That's that's cat. Why? You How many Sidney Sweeney fan accounts do you follow? Wait, so you you sought that picture out on oh, your own? I was on a fan account. Yeah. <laughs> the fan accounts are the horniest, always. The Correction, horniest. I do follow Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> Sometimes it's girls. You know what? I'm going to unfollow her. Okay, there you go. Yeah. We'll play a little cat and mouse with her. How do you like that? That'll get her attention. Maybe it, maybe it was a ploy to get the Bears' attention, because I bet Sydney Sweeney's going to see this and be like, wait, why did Big Cat unfollow me? Yeah. Um, maybe we, I should reach out to see if there's a problem. We also, after everyone freaked out about Justin Fields uh, unfollowing the Bears, we, Matt Eberflus, debuted a new beard, so got a new coach. He looks totally different. That's good. He looks like a winning football coach now. Like, it's, he, he basically is like, you know what, I know this marriage isn't going well, let me change something up. Look at him. Tell me that's not a fucking football coach now. When did you hire Brad Pitt? Because? I know. Guy is hot. He's going to win some games. So... Things are looking up. Sure. New, which would you rather have, Big Dom or a new beard on your coach? New beard on your coach. Easy. Easy. Oh, Big Dom so bad. How many draft picks would, would... <laughs> Big Dom so bad. Uh, the other thing was that Charlie Woods, he's trying to qualify for a, a PGA tournament today. He got – he actually didn't shoot Don't that – Don't say the score. He didn't shoot that bad. We're per, pro Charlie We are Charlie Woods. He got a – People delete it. But he got a 12 on the 7th. Without and then the he 12, rebounded with six straight parts. Yeah. That's mental yeah, toughness. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, people yeah. are talking about the 12 – when was the last time you got an octuple bogey and then it's six and then hit six pars in a row i bet you tiger's never done that in his entire life keep your head up charlie facts also if you get a if you get a 12 on a hold that just means you're not good at cheating yeah you need to get better at cheating yeah yeah no that that was listen everyone's trying to bash him no he's the next up you mark that you mark that a nine and then you keep it moving. Wasn't he qualify? He was trying to qualify for a PGA event. Yeah. Yeah, the event I'm calling next week. Oh, okay. So there you go. That would have been great if Charlie Woods had been in it. Yeah. He should get an exemption. Jake, can you give him a Jake exemption? Charlie you, Woods, you are playing in next week's event. No, you, you. what you should do is you should just randomly just start calling Charlie Wood, Woods highlights without anything on <laughs> <Yeah>. the screen. <laughs> like, and here's Charlie Woods. I'll try to work that in. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before we do Hank's number five Patriot of all time, Proper number 12 Irish whiskey. That's right. Pro proper 12 is rich and smooth. It's Irish whiskey. They've also got the proper number 12 Irish apple whiskey, which is the best sipping whiskey that you can have. Just pass a bottle around, pour it on ice, pour it in a glass. You can even mix it. It's great, great stuff. I love drinking it. They sent us a bunch when they came on as a sponsor. Put it on my bar cart. That stuff went fast. It's crisp and fresh, especially the Irish apple. It was founded by Conor McGregor. You can shoot your shot of proper number 12 Irish whiskey and pour the roar. Order your bottle of proper number 12 Irish whiskey with Drizzly. Check it out. Okay, Hank. Actually, I have one more thing before we do uh, your Patriot. I saw a uh, list today that I would like people to take a guess at, which may be an insult list for some of us here. Worst win percentages in the past 10 years in all four major sports. I don't Minnesota. Care. It's worst. 
So it's 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 all combined. Is it Minnesota the worst? Minnesota is not the worst. No, no, no. Sorry, it's each franchise like separate. So like if it were, do you understand what I'm saying? Like the Mets would be. It wouldn't be all New York sports. It'd be the Mets. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. Anyone take a guess for number one? Wait, so it's just one one franchise. One franchise, but it, it goes across all four major sports. It's ranked. Got I have it. a guess. The worst twenty five. It's not. No, this is not not an insult. The first. The New York Giants. No, it was the Jacksonville Jaguars, which kind of shocked me. Yeah, I mean, Chaps always brings out these weird stats about the Jaguars every time they win a game, and it's like, oh, this is the the first time since 1999 that they've won eight games in back to back seasons. You're yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So show, it's show me the Pirates. Uh, Pirates are not on there. They were, you know, they they won like 97 games in 2016 or 15. Um. Or 98 games, and that was a Schwarber home run. Jets are number two, Pistons three, Giants four, Browns five. PFD, unfortunately, uh, we're, we're brothers again. Bears are nine, Commanders are ten. Mm. It's been tough. Yeah, Knicks are 11. The The one that was, uh, what was the shocking one? Oh, the Blackhawks being 25 was pretty shocking because I guess it has been well, a while. Stanley Cups. Yeah, but th- it's been a while since that happened, and yeah. they've been really bad since. The Lakers are thirteen. Really? Yeah, they they I were really they bad in between Kobe and LeBron. A few bad seasons, yeah, yeah. But I just saw this and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Timberwolves were fourteen, Hank. That was your first Minnesota team. And then everyone else, I think, was clear except the yeah, Wizards. The Wizards are not on there. We, we had we had some good seasons with Paul Pierce and with uh, John Wall. Yeah, the basketball teams are the Pistons at three, the Magic at six. The Lakers at 13, the Timberwolves at 14, Hornets at 20. That's all the basketball. So, you're clear. I'm surprised the Hornets aren't higher. Yeah. Yeah, that, I was I was a little shocked at this list because the the top five made sense, and it really does show, like, the Giants and Jets, two and four is pretty pretty bad. Um, and if you, if you zoom out a little bit on the Giants, obviously the two Super Bowls, awesome. Maybe right. two of the best Super Bowl wins that you can ever have. So, you've had some good times in there, but besides those – if the Giants aren't winning the Super Bowl, they're not doing shit that year. Yeah, it is funny looking at this and being like, "Oh, if you've won a title in the last twenty years, that doesn't mean you know, like you'd still tra- you'd still take it." Like the Royals were twenty fourth. Yeah, you'd still take it. Absolutely, one hundred percent would take it. The Lakers, well, that didn't count as a bubble bubble title, and the Bears almost won uh, the Super Bowl in twenty eighteen. They were just like three games away. All right, Hank, number five Patriot of all time. As reported this by Hank huge. Lockwood. Wait, first recap, number six. Number six uh, was defense. Defense wins championships. He made two crucial plays uh, against the Seahawks, one against the Seahawks, one against the Falcons. Malcolm Butler. It's Dante Hightower. Oh. Mm. Number five, also defense. Oh. Early era, first oh. dynasty one. Teddy Bruschi? Swaggiest, probably the swaggiest Patriot, maybe on this whole list. Asante oh, we already, we already, we already, we already. It's it's Ty Sol, Law. Sol or Tom Brady is house. Laura Malloy, Ty Law, Ty Law, Ty Law. All right, okay. So that's number five. That's number five. You think he's the swaggiest Patriot on this list? I think he might be. Huh. Wow, can we do a top ten swaggiest? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the Patriots aren't the swaggiest team. That's kind of the whole Patriot way. Um, is four going to offense? Four is going to offense. Whoa! Can't wait for Monday. Devlin. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was trying to put Kevin Falk on this list, but my friends weren't weren't having any of that. Wait, I thought this was your list. It is. No, I'm saying. Whoa, we whoa, whoa, whoa! For what he meant to. Do the we have team. to start over. This whole list started with me being like, I've been fighting with my friends, or not fighting, but like you know, debating for the last day. But if you wanted to put them on, it's your list. But they, they, you know, they show. It. I wish I could put them on this, his list, but we I might can't. have to start over. This feels like Hank's friends list, not Hank's. Oh, list. It's my list. He's an honorable mention. That's we'll we'll do one. We'll do one member, one honorable mention per show. Kevin Falk. Is honorable mention. What number is he in the honorable mentions? Two. Okay. So ahead of the lighthouse. Because one yes. was wh- who's one? Bethel Johnson. Right. Okay. So Bethel Johnson number one. Now we're going in reverse in terms of ranking the honorable mention guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'd rather you go ten to one on the honorable mentions. All right. I don't know if I have ten, but I can. I can. 
add some more. So next, so, so so on Monday we're going to get the number four Patriot of all time and the number ten honorable mention. Yep. It was also just cool when they had a guy named Ty Law and then Lawyer Malloy also in the same backfield. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Hank, you, f- you feel good about that? Yeah, I feel good. You think people are going to come at you? I was, I, uh. Well, they don't know what the rest of the list is. <laughs> yeah. I thought he, he only, he only played in two Super Bowls. Well, he played in three, but one was 97. But he only played in two. Yeah, he only he won hurt. two Super Bowls. Yeah, he was hurt in 2003. So number four, I'm going to guess Jules. No, I think we said Jules was three. No, because I think he's going to go defense three. I think he's going to go like Gronk two. Vin- yeah, Gronk's going to be two. It's going to be like either. Wait, Vince- you think Gronk's going to be ahead of Jules? Yeah, I think so. Oh my god, I can't wait for Monday. And then I wish I th- someone could knock me over the head right now, and I just wake up and it's Sunday night, and we're recording the pod. It's going to be either Brewski, uh, Will Fork, <laughs> or <laughs> Willie McGinnis at number three. Oh, when are we going to start going back to seven through ten? That's when you get to one, then you go to ten. Okay, but I want him to go. T- I want him to go evens first, so ten, eight, and then nine, seven. JJ wouldn't understand yeah. this level of broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> what a teaser! Who's gonna? Who's it gonna be? Can you tell us? Does it go offense, defense, offense, offense? At starting at one? No, starting at four. <laughs> Starting at four, it goes offense, defense, offense, offense. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I yeah. think I think I'm right on the money. I, with no, this. I think Jules is gonna be. No, it's a defense number three. Yeah, I know. I think Jules might be two. No chance. No chance. Wow. Hank is Hank is playing this from not from a level of friendship, but from I don't know. He, remember when you didn't put Jules on the uh, Mount Rushmore of guests? Yeah, I do remember that. But in this, did, this that would, was really if, bad. If, if he would be, no matter what, he's on the Mount Rushmore. So what you're doing right now is you're bullying Hank into changing Jules I'm not. being the number two. No, Jake has the master list. And oh, this sorry. is also, what well, four through one is Mount Rushmore. So. True. Buzz off. But it's still, there's a difference between two and four. Big difference. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Is Chris Long on the list? Two gets the BCS, four doesn't. Chris Long is not on the list. Honorable mention? I didn't like that he went to the Eagles after, so I don't know. No. That really, that, that like, I And he know, likes long, Philadelphia more. Way more. Guy, yeah, 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 way yeah, way more. more. Yeah, like, he was kind of playing into him and Lane Johnson being like, they have no fun over there, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does He does kind of hate the Patriots. He's the only person that, like, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots and then beat the Patriots the next year in a Wrong. Super Bowl. Who else? LeGarrette Blount. He's an honorable mention, though. He, oh, oh no, no, don't, no. Ruin, don't ruin it. <laughs> By the way, ranking these one through four, we forgot to mention, I know we said it on Wednesday, the college football playoff, but it's very funny watching Notre Dame fans realize that they're fucked. Yeah, it is. It's great. It's just been a slow gonna figure And then some were coming after me saying they actually wanted this. Why? Why? They're guaranteed a home game. Oh, that's, that's a hell of a spin zone. As the 5 12. Crazy game. spin zone. So if they're the number one team in the country, they're going to want to play a first round game? No chance. That does kind of rock that you get to go to a home game, though. But still, no chance yeah. if they're the number one team in the right. country and they have to now play an extra game. Right. If you were asked, like, would you rather get an extra home game or be ranked in the top four and get a bye, you would take the bye. But uh, I think a home playoff game is a pretty good consolation. Yeah, people have been gun- getting their shots in it. Notre Dame, not relevant, they're saying. Mm, sad to see. Sad, real sad to see. Should have joined a conference. Why don't you just pony up and join a conference? Big Ten will maybe take you. Big Ten will take them in a fucking heartbeat. Uh, okay. Let's get to our interviews. We have great interviews. Doug McDermott and then Mark Titus. We're doing college basketball preview. Get you ready for March, which is, what, a week away? Yeah, it's pretty much March. Ooh, a week away. Can't wait. We have to wait an extra day because of the leap year. A motherfucker. But it's the third birthday part of my take. That's Oh, yeah, good point. That's true. We are three. Uh, Okay, before we do Greg McDermott, uh, PFT, you had a quick word from one of our sponsors. Yeah, before we get to Greg McDermott, he's brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? Well, I know. Time out. <laughs> Time out. We're going to have to restart the ad. <laughs> Hank's brain just broke. Wait, I was wrong. It's the second birthday. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, 12 yeah. years old. We're not 12 years old. I was like so confused for a second. It would be the second. Yeah, because no, the, it's the third. Wait, wait the pot. No, the well, podcast started, started the on the on, on 16. We, the podcast started in uh, February 29th of 2016. Right. right. That would mean that our first birthday okay, was so 20, February yeah. 29th right, of 2016. Good job, Hank. Time second, back in. Second, second birthday. Game on. Yes. <laughs> this math and Greg McDermott is brought to you by Rocket Money. <laughs> you guys ever feel like money's just flying out of your account and you don't know where it's going? 
I know. It's all those subscriptions. Think about it. It's between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps. Maybe if you have an AI video generator on your phone, it's endless. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. If I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I used Rocket Money a couple years ago. I, no joke, saved hundreds of dollars per year on stuff that I did not know that I spent money on. It's fantastic. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users. It has helped save its members an average of 720 bucks a year with over 500 million in uncanceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash take. That's rocketmoney.com slash take, rocketmoney.com slash take. And now, here's Greg McDermott. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays. It is Greg McDermott off of a huge, huge win. Uh, coach, first of all, thanks for joining us. I wanted to to go back quickly to Tuesday night. You beat number one UConn. <laughs> Incredible game by your guys. It was also your 600th victory, so congratulations on that. And you said Thank that you. it was one of the biggest wins in kind of school history and, and one of those big, like, not tide-changing wins, but one that people will remember. We've had a couple – we've had 48 hours. Are we sticking with that? Yeah, I mean, it was I, – I, I think it was important simply because we've we've had six shots at the number one team in our history and we weren't, weren't able to – get a win and and to do it against the Yukon team that was playing so well um and and to your point really important this time of the year as we move closer to the NCAA tournament the Big East tournament so it, it just kind of solidifies uh your resume and and hopefully sets you up for seating but uh you know from start to finish our crowd was absolutely uh phenomenal they were into it from the jump and uh you know, it was one of the better environments I've ever been part of. Yeah. I, by the way, I did a bad job of asking that question because it made it seem like I was expecting you to be like, no, I've looked back and it was, it's not <laughs> that important. I'm a big believer as a sports fan, as a diehard sports fan, you have to embrace the, the, the ride and those big wins. Like, okay, maybe it doesn't end up in a national championship this year. Hopefully it does for you, but fan bases have to enjoy those big moments because those are special nights that you can't just brush off and be like, oh, it was another Tuesday night in February. Yeah, and it's I mean, college basketball is hard, and yeah. it's uh, you know trying to beat a team like UConn is is very difficult. They're they're elite in so many different ways, offensively, defensively, on the glass. Um, obviously, they take on Danny's personality uh, with the way they play and the and the toughness uh, that they play with. So, yeah, you have to play a hell of a game. So when you when you find a way to when you find a way to beat them, and, and you know we've been fortunate, we've uh, we've had. Some success against them, um, but you don't take it for granted because it's 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 hard to win, especially in this league. So you go down early; they kind of punched you in the mouth right off the bat. And I feel like most teams kind of crumble because yeah. it's, it's UConn; they get intimidated. But whether it's Coach Hurley or or their reputation, what they've done in the past, what they've accomplished, uh, but you guys bounce back after. Did you? Can you give yourself some credit for like, hey, I that's a pretty good job coaching that I did. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Uh, it was a bad job coaching the first four minutes of the game because we were behind 11 to three. But, you know, I think a lot of it was, you know, Trey Alexander and Ryan Kalkbrenner, you know, Kalk's been here four years, Trey three years. We've had success against UConn. So a lot of teams haven't. And I think because of the fact that we've had some success in the past and and while we got, you know, absolutely spanked at their place, um, uh, we we did some really good things defensively. We had held them to sixty two points. Their their field goal percentage, their in fact, the field goal percentage was not good. We just were atrocious offensively, and most of it had to do with them. So I don't think our guys were concerned because we've had success with them in the past against them in the past. And and you know once we got the crowd in the game, you know all all bets were off. You know it it, it was a difficult place to play the rest of the night for UConn. Yeah. What, one last question about UConn, and this is a, a Dan Hurley question. We're friends with Dan. So, uh, we, you know, full bias out there. Uh, and we have a theory, and I want to know from a, from the opposing coach's box, when he drinks that mushroom tea at the beginning of the game and it looks like he's dr drinking piss, that's a little intimidating, <laughs> right? I, I don't, I, I've always wondered what was in that. <laughs> it's uh, piss. It's piss. It's you piss. Know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a fun game, and, and 
you know, the, we've had some great battles with UConn. And, but at Creighton, you know, our, our fans don't come to watch the opposing team play. They come to watch us play. And that's, uh, you know, that's different than most places. But, uh, you know, Dan, Danny does a great job and, you know, he's, he's so intense and, you know, and I'm friends with Danny too. And, you know, off, off the floor, uh, he's a, he's, he's an awesome guy and the game starts and he's, he's a little bit psychotic, but it's, that's who he is and that's how he coaches. And he, he gets every last bit of energy out of every one of his guys and, uh, deserves a lot of credit for the success they've had. Yeah. And it, it, like coaches in college basketball, especially because the rosters change year to year. Like I love guys who stay a while. Like you, you, you've been at Creighton for a long time. That's what fans start to kind of, you know, they take the, the teams take on the image of their coach and you get a uh, you know Greg McDermott going against Danny Hurley every year like that's fun that that's what I that's what I like to tune into. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's fun to develop those rivalries and uh, you know it, and you know we're not you're not getting anything easy. Uh, you know we're not getting our you know our pet plays against UConn and you know they're probably not getting theirs against us just because we've coached against each other we know know each other we know tendencies. And then at the end of the day, it comes down to players, and that's really what it's all about, anyway. If, yeah. if you, you don't have a good, if you don't have good players, you're not beating UConn. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have pretty good players, you're probably not beating Creighton. Um, so it's it's uh, it's 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 fun to have some guys that have been in the league a long time, and uh, uh, you know those rivalries. You know, we certainly, even though we're a long ways apart, I think we develop a pretty pretty healthy rivalry with UConn. Yeah, especially in the Big East, it's always been about having coaches with big personalities and and uh, the you know ongoing rivalries that they have and the battles that they go through with each other. So, uh, in in terms of the league, the Big East especially, who is your favorite coach to go up against? Whether it's somebody that brings something different out of you or someone where you just enjoy the competition with that person. Yeah, I mean, you kind of certainly one team that I really enjoy competing against because you, you know, you find out if you're doing your job well. Uh, but there's so many great coaches in this league. Uh, you know, you know, Ed Cooley's a great friend of mine. It's that's been well documented, and um, so you know, I was, you know, he bought me dinner in Omaha this year, so it's good. To, it's good when he comes to town because I can send him the check because that fat contract <laughs> he's got over there. Uh, but uh, you know, across the board, from you know Sean Miller to Shaka to Thad Thad Mata. Um, and you know, uh, uh, Shaheen's done a great job at Seton Hall this year and right on down the line, there's, it's, it's really, a, a league of, of really good coaches and, and a lot of good guys. And, and for the most part, um, you know, we get along pretty well. Um, you know, it's, we're a basketball centric league and we're only going to survive if our, if our men's basketball programs are doing well. Um, so it's, uh, you know, a lot of guys have done a lot for this conference. Yeah. On, on that point. Uh, I know it's been a while. Is I think it was 2013. You guys, uh, you know, joined the Big East, but it's something that is now happening in college sports, basically every year, where teams are going up, teams are going down. There's all this transition. What was the the biggest like hurdle when you went from you know Missouri Valley to Big East, and you you took that step up in class? Because we're going to see it many many more times with teams going up and down, left and right. Yeah, fortunately for us, Big Cat, when. Uh... When we made that move, that was Doug's senior year. So, you know, Grant Gibbs, Doug, Johannes Maniga, Ethan Rogge, those guys were seniors. You could have taken that group in, into any conference in the country and they were going to have a chance to be successful. And I think it's so important that you have success, you know, early and you show that you belong. And I think that group really blazed the trail for what's followed. And, you know, we had a little blip in the, in the radar the next year. Um, because the guys that were playing, um, you know, behind that group were recruited to play in the Missouri Valley. And, um, you know, while we didn't have a great record that year, uh, we got better and some of the guys, younger guys in our program grew. Um, but, you know, you, you <clears throat> thank God we made the move, you know, in this day and age with what's happening with mid-majors and, and with the transfer portal and I it's, it's difficult. So I think you you have to be a have to have a seat at the right table. And and you know I'd like to think you know certainly the Big East has done a lot for our institution and our athletic program. And I'd like to think that we've added some value there as well. But uh, the fact that we were able to get off to a good start, finish second in the league the first year, get to the get, we got beat by Providence in the Big East title game. Um, I think had a lot to do with what the trajectory that we've had since. Yeah. How did you recruit Doug McDermott? Uh, he, you know, he went to Northern Iowa to start when I was coaching at Iowa State. He actually signed with Northern Iowa. Uh, and then when I came over here, we were in the same conference, and he wasn't excited about playing against me twice a year. Um, but, 
you know, uh, I sleep with his mom, so that gives me a, <laughs> there it is. It, it gives me an outside chance. I was I was setting you up for that because I, I, I knew where you were going. It. I knew you were going. It's a great line. I got him because I slept with his mom. Well, it's also I'm going back and looking at it, and I, there's a rumor out there. Maybe you can dispel it that he got tens of thousands of free meals before he, he came to play for he got, you. He got a lot of that, and uh, actually, his senior year uh, back in the days without any NIL. Uh, Grant Gibbs got a six year of eligibility and we didn't have a scholarship. So we put Gibbs on scholarship and Doug became a walk on his senior year. So he actually still owes me for that. Oh, I, I, yeah. I paid his tuition his senior year. You think that would come around. Yeah. Uh, at some point, but he yeah. still hasn't paid me that check. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I want to go back to maybe maybe a sore memory from last year. You guys made a little run in the tournament. Unfortunately, didn't end the way that you wanted uh, against San Diego State. Right. And uh, I'm curious from your perspective, do you go back, do you watch that game film? Do you try to erase it from your memory because of the way that it ended? And then moving forward, did you watch the final four or were you just in a place where it's like, I, I'm so devastated by this. That I don't want to watch college basketball. I, I finally watched the game on uh, the last recruiting trip in July on the way home. Uh, you know, so recruiting was over for the summer. I was going to go play some golf for a few weeks and I'm like, all right, let's, let's exercise this demon and watch that game. Uh, you know, and it was it was a hell of a game. It could have it could have went either way, and it, it came down to the very end. Uh, you know, I watched the Final Four. Just get, you know, I like hoops. Uh, Brian Dutcher is a good friend of mine. Obviously, UConn being in the tournament. Um, you know, I wanted to follow that, but you know, it's hard to get it's hard to get on that doorstep and and be knocking on that door. Uh, a lot of things have to fall right from a matchup perspective, and your team has to you know play at a high level. Um, you know, and, you know, I hope we'll get back there. I hope we'll have another chance at it at some point during my career. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I also didn't want it to define what was a, a very good season by that group of guys last year. Um, so, you know, you, if, if I don't want it to, I, if I don't want it, the guys to feel like that defined the season, then, you know, I can't act that way either. Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, how often do you practice free throws with your team? Cause that's a big that's a big thing when I'm watching college hoops. Like you got to make your free throws, and I don't know if you saw, but uh, we did a free throw did. challenge. Yeah, I mean that was impressive. Yeah, thank, thankful, thankfully, we shoot them better than you guys. Wait, I mean, well, hold on. We hit 41 in a row with the mulligan. What What did it take? How many hours? 16 15, hours. 16. 16. That's a lot of free throws, coach. 41. <laughs> we, we, I think now, I made. Frank, I mean, was Frank in, was Frank involved in that, or was he not part of? It? No, Frank, no. Frank wasn't very nice to me after that Seton Hall game in Jersey. <laughs> That's you listen. Somebody Frank, sent me that. The dude killed me. That's when, that's when you know you've made it, though. When Frank the Tank ha has has you know shown his ire at you. Uh, if you're in sports, it's like, yeah, I finally got on his radar. But yeah, we, we listen. We 41 free throws in a row. Um, do you practice them every single day? Because I hope so. We do. Our, okay. We do. Our, our guys have to make a certain amount of free throws in a row before they leave practice every day. How many? Sometimes. So we We'd sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 14. Just kind of depends what, uh, you know, where the clock's at at that particular time. But fortunately, we've knock on wood, I hate to say it, but we've been a pretty good free throw shooting team. So if we, if PFT and I were on your team, we would actually be your best players because we'd never leave practice. We'd just right, always be say, a practice. First in, last how long, out. How long would it take <laughs> you guys individually to make 12 in a row? Uh, 12 in a row. Well, Big Cat can get hot. Yeah, I, I could make 12 I'm in a row. I'm not what you call uh, a basketball player. So um, it would probably, if you asked me to make eight in a row, it would probably take me uh, five, six hours to be able to accomplish that. <laughs> but it get done. Yeah, it could get. That's a guy that's yeah, a guy that's in the gym though. Yeah, I mean, you, it it could gym. get done. Well, one other thing that I've seen you do, coach, and I'm not sure if you can still do it, but uh, I saw a video of you dunking at practice. Ooh, can you still dunk? I, I haven't tried for. My goal was to do it when I was 50, and uh, I did do it when I was 50. May or may not have slipped a, a women's basketball under the rack sometime during practice with the manager of the year, uh, but I was able to get it done. And and uh, but you know now my I don't want to blow an Achilles or a hamstring uh, trying to do something stupid at fifty nine. So uh, I, I've shelved that one. Well, what about if you win the championship? If you win the Natty, will you try to dunk again to celebrate? I will. I will do that. Okay. If, if, if we win it, I you like guys, that. Yeah. You can come to our. You can come. We'll host you, and we'll have a big, you know, done. Greg McDermott yeah. dunk off. Done. Yeah. All right. So now <laughs> we might be need, rooting for you. We're, we're going to need an elite physical therapist to do some stretching before and after. We can get uh, you. We can get you. But set we up. can get it there. We yeah. can get it. Yeah. Um, how many times have you had McDonald's with Warren Buffett? Uh, never. What? Uh, 
but you you see uh you know you see warren in a restaurant in, in omaha once in a while uh he was uh, he doesn't come around a, a lot to games, but he was uh, he was at Doug Senior night. He was very upset with the official that called that foul against us on San Diego State last year, uh, and he made it he made it well known. But uh, obviously, he's uh, he's done a lot for this community. Yeah. yeah, it would be great if you went out to eat with him and you picked up the check. That would be yeah, such a power that, move, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah that would that'd be a big time power move. Yeah, yeah. You if I saw him <laughs> eating in a restaurant, I just I just point across the table. I'd be like, "Hey, I want to cover that guy's I, bill." Don't I got tell his. Him yeah. yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to uh, Doug real quick, we see it obviously all the time in college basketball. A lot of times, there'll be the coach will have their son on the team, uh, but very few times it's you know you guys have the success that you guys had together. Was it hard? coaching your son and and kind of balancing that where it's like you he's one of the guys but he's also your son and you, you have to maybe there's moments where you're sitting there watching the game and you're just proud of your son but you're like wait I'm coaching a Big East basketball team I gotta snap out of it yeah you know there were some things the first year uh, it, it, that were challenging I think more so for Doug than probably for me um, he, it was very important to him that he was treated like one of the guys and, you know, I remember a specific time uh, one of his teammates telling me that after a really hard practice, uh, you know, he walks in the locker room and all of a sudden everything goes silent. And Doug's like, now, wait a second. You know, I think he's an asshole, too, for what went on today. So <laughs> I'm with you guys. Uh, but, you know, when when Doug asked me and said that, you know, that that I want to I want to be treated like everybody else, I said, I can do that. But when I tell you to block out, you can't look at me like I told you to take the garbage out and you don't want to do it. Like right. if, if this is going to be coach and player, then it has to be that from your perspective too. And it was a challenge for Doug because for the first 18 years of his life, my voice was his father's voice. And then all of a sudden it's his coach's voice. <clears throat> and, you know, because in college coaching, you don't have an opportunity to coach your kid in junior high and AU, you know, you're doing your job. So I, I, I didn't really coach Doug much outside of driveway stuff um, until he got to college. But once we got to that point, um, it was great. And NBA scouts that came in and watched us play, watched, watched us practice when he was a junior and senior, they'd, you know, they'd said many times, if we didn't know it, there's no way we'd know your father and son uh, by, the, by watching you interact and practice. That's the way he wanted it. Uh, that's the way I wanted it. And it's, uh, you know, obviously it was a really special time. You probably, I probably didn't, embrace it and enjoy it as much when it was going on because you're in the grind. Uh, but looking back on it for both of us, it's, it was a pretty special time. Yeah. When he got the nickname Dougie McBuckets, were you like, that's a cool nickname or were you like, chill out with the nickname, son? You no, no, that, that, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty cool nickname. And, uh, you know, and I get called from high school, more high school coaches, but some college coaches have called me as well that were contemplating coaching their kid. And obviously it's different in high school because he, you know, he goes home with you every night and you're at the dinner table every night. Uh, but, um, you know, it's easy if he's your best player or a guy that doesn't play very much, you know, people got pissed off if I took him out of the game at Creighton. Uh, so that was never, never really a problem. Yeah. yeah I, I have an X's and O's question for you. Um, this kind of goes back to UConn, but when you have a, a team that can shoot well from the outside, how do you, how do you make them worse at shooting? Cause it seems so, like it's something very difficult to do that a lot of coaches try to do. Um, but very few can accomplish. You know, we're trying to limit the amount of three-point shots teams get. You know, everybody has a defensive philosophy, and, you know, UConn's going to pressure you. They're going to try to force you into turnovers, um, and obviously it works really well for them. We we try to send everything to Ryan Kalkbrenner at the rim and try to, you know, make sure their best shooters aren't getting a lot of looks from the three-point line. And I think they're, you know, uh, Caravan and Spencer, their two best shooters the other night, only had five three-point attempts. So that's what we're trying to do, <clears throat> and obviously we spend a lot of time in practice running guys off the line and, and making sure you're not getting hit by screens uh, to try to accomplish that. And, you know, some days it works, some games it works better than others. But, uh, you know, fortunately for us the other night, it worked really well. Yeah. I like the word philosophy too. It's kind of like culture, but every coach has their different philosophy on, on, you know, how to build a team and how to play. What would your philosophy be if you were to distill it down to like one thing about basketball? Well, it's, I mean, offensively it's freedom and, and you know, I like and that. Pace. You know, we're, our, our, you know, we'll we'll do we'll we'll do a lot of different gimmicky stuff defensively. How we guard a ball screen, what we're going to do, we'll go over a screen on one guy, under a screen on another. But offensively, our guys have the freedom to play um, and the freedom to shoot. You know, we we take some crazy shots 
from six feet behind the line at times. Uh, but we also practice those shots. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, everybody recruits to how they're trying to play. We want guys that can really shoot the basketball, that can handle it, that can pass it. Um, and that, you know, have a good at basketball IQ. And that's, that's what we've been successful with. And, and, uh, that's what we'll continue to try to do moving forward. Yeah. So speaking of freedom, how many shots in a row <clears throat> does a guy have to make to allow him a really terrible heat check shot? It, it depends who it is. Yeah. That <laughs> makes sense. You know, Steven Ashworth had a great start to the game the other night, you know, the transfer from Utah state, he's played awesome here the last, you know, 10 or 12 games. Um, but I had him do a drill in practice that I talked about in the post game the other night uh, that I that I used to have Doug do where you couldn't you have to make five in a row or five shots from five spots, um, and if you miss two in a row, you have to go back to the beginning and start again. And he made thirty three in a row. Wow! Uh, and so he said, "Well, what should I do now? Am I done?" And I'm like, "No, if you're going to shoot those crazy shots eight feet behind the line uh, in games, let's let's back up and practice some of those." And and he had a couple bombs the other night. So, uh, but. Our guys have a lot of freedom. They know it. Um, and, you know, I, I think it does something to the opposing defense when they know that a guy can pull from 28 feet anytime they want. I mean, that that puts a little bit more pressure on our opponent's defense. Yeah. Okay, so counterpoint to that question, if you have a guy that has – how many shots in a row does a guy have to miss before you're like, hey, you know, there's limits to our freedom here. We need to, we need to <laughs> reel in some of this freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's the old coaching uh, saying that you, the last thing you want to do is tell a bad shooter to shoot. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. you know, if 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 our guys if they can shoot it, um, you know, and a lot of times you have to talk guys off the ledge and remind them that you know the best shooters in the world, you know, miss over half their shots. Uh, you know, my son is one of you know top ten or fifteen per, three point percentage shooter in NBA history. And that's at like 41%. So he's missing six out of 10. So um, there, it, it, that doesn't mean you make, you know, two out of every five. You're going to go six of seven, and then you're going to go one of seven. It just happens. Um, but you trust your work. You trust your preparation. Um, the other side of me is, is if, a, you know, if a guy like Baylor, Baylor Shireman has missed five in a row, I like his chances on the sixth one um, that he's going to knock the next one down. Yeah. Yeah. How's, what's the fastest you've ever pulled a guy out of a game? Because I love old school college basketball coaches. Yeah, there, there, there's, yeah. There's, there's, yeah, there's. It's been it's been seconds before. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I love I mean, it. Yeah, I mean it's been a while, uh, but you know something stupid happens on the first play that you you've gone through a hundred times and a guy screws it up. It's you know let's get him out of there. That's what one of my favorite. I, I'm I'm a Badger fan, and Bo Ryan used to do that all the time, where he would just like you'd be 20 seconds into a game, and someone would get yanked, and you're like, all right, yeah, so Bo, he's, Bo, he's yeah, Bo didn't mess around. I, I knew <laughs> Bo, and I've known each other since his Division three days. So, uh, yeah, he he didn't mess around. Yeah, I like that move. What do you tell the guy when you when he gets pulled? He's a starter, <laughs> and he gets pulled like 10 seconds into the game. You just sit him down. And you're like, hey, we we've been over this. You're like, what are you doing? If that happens, you don't have to say a word. Yeah. <laughs> Message received. Yeah, uh, he knows. He knows getting. exactly. He knows exactly uh, why he's coming out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess this is a tough question to ask, and uh, I'm I'm curious to know if you're going to actually answer. What is the expectation for you in this postseason this year? Well, I mean, the first thing is you got to get you got to get there, <laughs> and you know, there's teams that are that have high expectations going into season, and they don't it doesn't work out and, and they don't, they don't make the tournament. So you, we're always gearing ourselves to play our best at the end of the year um, and build towards February and March. Um, make sure your, your body's healthy, your, their mind's in a good spot. Um, you know, and the NCAA tournament is so much about matchups um, and it, you know, everybody talks about seeding. Seeding to me doesn't, doesn't mean much unless you get to play, you know, close to your backyard uh, but it's about matchups. So, you know, I, I know that the guys that decided to come back, you know, Baylor Shireman came back for his fifth year. Alexander and Kalkbrenner tested the NBA waters last year and decided to come back. Uh, you know, they want to get back to that game. They want to get back to that moment and have a chance to try to knock the door down and get to the final four in the first time, first time in Creighton history. So I know that's what they're thinking. I'm thinking about the next game and the next play. Uh, I think as a coach, if you think any other any other way, you're asking for trouble. So, do you guys uh, pay attention to Ken Palm at all? Any guys in your office? Yeah, my, you know my staff's looking at that all the time, and uh, 
you know, because it's it, it measures a lot of the things that at the end of the day, analytically, we're trying to measure anyway. Uh, you know, how are we performing in, in comparison to our to our peers? Um, and, you know, there's it, it also gives us some information on, you know, what percentage of our shots or three point shots is it what we want it to be? And on the other side, are we making sure our opponents aren't shooting a high percentage there? Uh, you know, we don't force turnovers. Uh, we don't shoot a lot of free throws, but we don't foul, so our opponents don't either. So those are things that we're constantly looking at. Well, I got some good Ken Palm stats for you. And you All can right, maybe, this is going to be good. You can tell to the guys. So uh, I saw this the other day. It's as of Tuesday. Uh, according to Ken Palm, the last 20 national champions have all been top 25 in adjusted efficiency margin, top 37 in adjusted offensive efficiency, top 38 in adjusted defensive efficiency, top 45 in strength of schedule rating. This is as of Tuesday. The teams that follow under those categories are Purdue, Arizona, Tennessee, North Carolina, Marquette, Michigan State, and Creighton. Hmm. So you're in there. And <laughs> as of right now, you have the, the the balance of the team, you know, both offense and defense, and played a very good schedule. I don't know. I you, you could tell your guys that maybe you don't want to, you know, maybe you want to do what you just did, saying hopefully we get into the tournament. I'm news. I'm going to break some news to you. You're going to be in the tournament, uh, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, it sounds like if they get any coaching, they're going to be in good shape. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's up to you. You have the, yeah, you no have the guys. Don't, no pressure. Try, try not to screw it up. Yeah, try not to screw it up. Stay out of their way. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> here, here's an easy question for you. What city would you like to retire in more? Uh, Omaha or Columbus, Ohio? Mm. What do you uh, think that, is a better retirement you destination? What, that is a uh, that's a cagey question. That's yeah. your. <clears throat> you know, I've I've I live on a golf course here in Omaha, so uh, uh, and I like the golf course, so uh, it, you know, it'd probably be Omaha. Okay, okay, good that's, answer. That's a good answer. Good answer. <laughs> uh, I have one last question for you, Coach. This has been awesome. It's the rowback question. R H O B A C K dot com. Use promo code take twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, polos, hoodies, joggers. Great. <laughs> Polos for the golf course, Roback.com, promo code TAKE. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but maybe you can explain it. I I love college hoops. I actually love I, – I love the first two days of March Madness, but conference championship week is my favorite. How much more difficult is conference championship week than the actual tournament? Because it feels like every year that's when it's like the, this is – all these teams know each other, back-to-back -back games – it's the toughest as tough could get. Like, what is the preparation when you're going into the Big East tournament versus March Madness? Yeah, I mean, it, to your point, it's so difficult because, you know, there there are no secrets, you know, and and it's it's it you know hopefully you don't play in that first night. It's three games in three days, uh, without a without a chance to breathe in between and 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 against teams that really know you. And uh, in our league, you know, and I I turn on some of the other conference tournaments when you're sitting around like the garden is jammed um it, it is packed it is an incredible environment um uh, especially if we're playing somebody from the east coast it's it's a uh it's a hard environment you're essentially playing a road game uh but it, it's uh you know it's really really challenging uh but it's also really special and you can uh you really sense it um you know how important the big east tournament is to the schools in the big east you know that to actually try to win that tournament. I think some conference tournaments, why they're important, they, you know, they're kind of looking ahead to the NCAA tournament, but in the big East, it's a, uh, you know, it, it's huge to have an opportunity to win that. And, and, you know, we, we played in it nine years, uh, cause one year got wiped out by COVID. Um, at least we played a half in that year, but, uh, and we've been in the championship four times and just haven't won it. So for us, uh, you know, we'd like to knock that door. Down yeah. We've talked well. to a, a couple of big East coaches about that tournament. And I'm always curious to know, like, do you, do you hold anything back at all, or is it just like let's go full send during the tournament, and then we'll regroup and uh, and figure out what we want to do for the for the round of sixty eight? No, it, all you got to do is watch a game. It's so high level, and uh, everybody's trying to win. I don't think there's anybody holding in, in anything back. And you know, even Villanova, I think their national championship teams. I think they won the Big East tournament both of those years. Um, and you know, uh, UConn got beat, I believe, in the semis last year. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, you it, it's it's hard basketball, but it's it's also an incredible, incredible experience for the young guys to get an opportunity to play in it, especially in the Garden in the Big East tournament. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. There's no better time than March, uh, Coach. Thank you so much. Listen, 
if my team can't win, maybe I'm rooting for uh, you to come to our office and, and dunk one I, last dunk. I think you can yeah. dunk. Yeah. I, I think you can do it. I've, I've seen you running up and down the sidelines. I think that you've you've still got some bounce in those legs. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm yeah, if I'm chasing a referee, maybe I have a little more adrenaline at that point. But uh, if it guys, if we get there, I'll be there. I appreciate it. Okay, we can we can get a ref for you that you can chase around. <laughs> we'll get someone in a ref, you know, and just like yell at you, and then you can. You can chase him and dunk. But uh, thanks so much, Coach. Best of luck the rest of the season. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Coach McDermott was brought to you by our great friends over at Coors Light. From day-to-day -day annoyances to the big stuff that life throws your way, it's easy to get worked up. But there's a better way. There's a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance party. If you're too cold for an ocean swim, play volleyball. Light a bonfire instead. I was on the golf course last Saturday. I was playing. It started to rain. Guess what I did? I cracked open a Coors Light. I chose to chill in that moment. I'm going to be having a few Blue Mountains this weekend. Nothing better than watching basketball when you got a Coors Light in your hand. It's cold. When the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. I love Coors Light. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And now here's Mark Titus. Okay. It's time for some college basketball talk. We have our colleague, Whoa. which it's not weird to say anymore, but it is probably maybe a little weird for uh, AWLs because we haven't had you on since I think I think it's been a year. I think it's been around a year because you've been at Barstool for almost a yeah, year. Yeah, I think now. I came on like right when I signed on. Yeah. 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 So it is Mark um, Titus. We can't um, have him on more frequently than that given his outbursts in the past. Yeah. Right? His, All the uh, comments. The comments, the things that we've had to bleep out after the fact. Yeah, it's easier to book him now. Uh could just be like, hey, you want to come on? And uh, it's been almost a year. So we basically hired you because we're like, at some point, we're going to have to do a free throw challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've done that. So I'm. Unfortunately, I'm going to here to tell you that your contract is going to expire and you're not you're not going to be renewed. We'll bring you back like Mantis for a day next time <laughs> yeah. we need you. Yeah, yeah. yeah how, we, how you we, feel? We learned we learned that we don't we don't actually need you as badly as we thought. We have Mantis now. Yeah, yeah. you walk in, we'll be like that boy's straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so uh, that was I. You've had a lot of welcome to Barstools. I, I I the the first your first week here was the first week of March Madness. Yeah, and. Uh, I remember so vividly walking into you uh, in your studio in the old New York office, and you had – it looked like you had just come back from Vietnam. You had a, a, a million-mile stare, and I was just like, you're right, dude? And he's like, that was just a lot. And I was like, you should, yeah. you should go home to L.A. for a couple days. But now that you're comfortable – it's not a bad place, right? I love it. Um, I, 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 I absolutely love it. It's been, it's been awesome. The free throw stream was so fun. I, yeah. I did. I mean, you said this too that like, I, I went home. I was exhausted. I, I went to bed immediately. Slept forever. I woke up and the first thought I had was, I want to get back on the line. Yeah, with the boys. I miss it. <laughs> with I miss boys. It. I yeah. Want to get back there. Yeah. Um. No, this place is incredible. It, it's, it's like every day is a, is a circus. Um, in a good way. Uh, but yeah, yeah it, there was an adjustment period, and getting thrown into the gambling cave and out of the start was yeah <laughs> was very difficult because yeah I my my memory was like day one Dave asked me for a pick I kind of I I didn't even yeah I I I I don't watch basketball in that way so like I was just kind of like I don't fucking know uh, Kentucky I guess I think Kentucky played Kansas State and they won yeah. And then I went home, I went back to the hotel, and I was like, thank fucking God, that's over. And then the very next morning, uh, I was in line at Starbucks, and Dave was behind me, and he's like, Titus. And I was like, oh, what's up, Dave? And I was waiting for like the pat on the back, and he just goes, give me another pick. I was like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. I was, yeah. like, I was like, oh, fuck, again? And he's yeah. like, yeah, dude, it's day two. Yeah. Get another one. Then yeah. you're his guy, and that's a dangerous yeah. place to be because you can get you can get the ax immediately. Right. Point. You're on yeah. the radar. Yeah. Um, I, I I'll be better prepared this year. Yeah, yeah so we were, we were watching uh, day one of March Madness last year, and there was a lot going on. There were a lot of games. Yeah. Um, you went through some ups and downs right off the bat. I don't, I don't think you'd been in like a gambling environment like that before. What adjustments are you going to make for this year's March Madness? Uh, I'm going to be more aware of spreads. Uh, that was something that I – it's already hard enough trying to decide who's going to win these games. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I'm going to be more in tune with that. Um, I, I also learned that like nobody actually – yeah, I don't know. It was it was difficult because nobody gave a fuck about the basketball. Everybody was just like, like uh, watch it. Like uh, Big Ev and I got into a little uh, dust up one. Th I, I I have a memory of that because yeah. he he was just screaming like, how how do you call that fucking foul? And then I just like, 
In retrospect, I shouldn't have, but I was like, I mean, Ev, he, he hit him right on the arm as he was shooting. He was like, I know that, but I don't give a fuck. Like, how do you cut you yeah. know? Yeah. There's no rash. I realized, yeah. like, ah, okay, so we're we're kind of approaching this a little differently. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to gamble heavily. Yeah, that's yeah. maybe that's really I just gotta, I got to get into the trenches with the boys. It's yeah. like if you that's if it. you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So just, yeah, you, you'll become one of those yeah. people eventually. You'll yeah. become everything you'll do. Mark. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk some college basketball. This has been yeah. a f- very fun season. It feels like very wide open, kind of similar to last yeah. year. Uh, UConn is the best team, you would say, right, right. now. But they just lost to Creighton by right. a billion. Um, what, what are your big picture – thoughts going into the conference championship week and and uh the tournament for someone I, who maybe doesn't watch college basketball is trying to catch up i think i want to kind of say everyone sucks but that's not a good way to get people into the sport or no, is it? not everyone sucks yeah i think I, everyone sucks on the road everyone sucks on the road that's the thing and that's it's hard because sure. like you want to you want to get excited about teams but then even kentucky's a good example is like kentucky goes to auburn the, a, a very hard place to win they looked awesome, and you're like, oh my god! They, like I've gotten to the point where I I only almost look at road performances because home the, the home court will lie to you. So Kentucky looks awesome at Auburn. I talked myself into them, and then last night they look like dog shit against yeah. LSU. Um, so yeah, like not not everybody sucks. It's just everybody has very obvious weaknesses. And uh, you know, a week ago it was Purdue and UConn and everybody else, and now, I mean, Purdue loses at a bad Ohio State. It, against the bad Ohio State team, UConn got blown out. At yeah, Creighton. Um, that was due. I felt it like was. That was due, and and they needed that. I think yeah. I think UConn, I think when UConn beat the hell out of Marquette, uh, the conversations about like is this team better than last year way too premature. For yeah, me. and I think like that was that was rat poison. Is is it saving this? Yes, saving, rat yeah. poison. Yeah. Rat, yeah, that was rat poison. Yeah, but you're you're right. There, the I mean the road the road games are tough. Uh, Kentucky's a good. Example, I mean that that was an incredible un- ending where they finally Kentucky finally hit a big shot at the end of a game, yeah. and then they just stopped playing defense. Which they never really started playing defense this year. No, they they I don't think they, they've like ever been like let's start playing defense. Right. They just started the season and they're like, oh yeah, there's a- other half of this game. Whatever. Yeah. Is Cal on the hot seat for real this time? <laughs> oh, no, dude, it's. So- I mean, it actually like it, no. It, at, well, it at feels some like point, it might be for real. At some point, the meme becomes the reality. Yeah. Right? And uh, I. They're not going to fire him. Um, he has a lifetime contract, so I think they have to kill him. I think they have to. They'll actually, do that. They <laughs> yeah. have to actually execute him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it does feel like there might be a conversation where they're like, "Cal, are you sure you want to do this still?" Like, and Cal, like, how, how much longer do you want to live? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, there might be a, a friendly nudge. They they might try, but I th- I think the AD loves him. I don't know. The the Kentucky fans are. Absolutely ready to for a change, though. Well, absolutely. It, it also hurts that like this is a very talented Kentucky team. Yep. And then they have Reed Shepard, their point guard, who's from Kentucky, who's like every Kentucky fan's yeah. like wet dream, where he's really good, and they're like this should be everything, and they just don't play. This defense. is this feels like it should be a vintage Cal team because the last couple years they haven't even been that bad. The last few years, to be honest, like they just they they lose to St. Peter's, but uh, w- which was very very bad. But they were a two seed, right? And I think like when you look back on the last few years of Kentucky, you, it feels like they were like five hundred the last few years, you know. And they they haven't been that. They've been good. They just haven't been Kentucky good. And then they fuck it up in the tournament. Um, but. Cal went away from like what made his teams good, which is like the one and done stuff, and like I'm just gonna overwhelm you with talent. And he started going to the transfer portal, and he's getting Oscar Shibwe and Shavir Wheeler and guys like that. That didn't really work out for him. He hit a hard reset, and this team is all guard oriented. Mm-hmm. They're all young dudes that are gonna be like NBA players. He has like five future NBA players on this team, probably. Yeah. Um, if not more than that, probably more than that. Uh, everything about it feels like a vintage John Calipari team. So if he fucks this up, like I mean, he's, you're kind of out of like, ex- I don't know if excuses, but you're you're out of like paths for him to get it back. Like yeah. he's just com- if he fucks this up, he's completely lost the magic. Team. And it's and it will be. Uh, I mean, it's already been a decade, but it's like we're what we're on 12, 13 years. Yeah, since they won a title. Yeah. What is a fuck up for him this year? Like it, he has to get uh, the Sweet Sixteen, Final Four. I mean, I would have thought if if they uh, they, they should have they sh- they should be competing in the SEC. Like they sh- the, there's kind of I mean the SEC is good, so I don't want to say there's no excuse for them not to win the league. But like they the fact that they're not even going to come close to winning the league is crazy. Uh 
They have to make at least the Sweet 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least. At the and very they're not. Least. I mean, they're they, not. I don't think they're going to. And if they and get like, spanked in the Sweet 16, then it's like he fucked us up. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that, I guess that's the hard part when evaluating this stuff is you always move the goalposts. And, you, yeah. yeah. You know, he loses to the national championship by five, and you're like, fucked it up. Fucked yeah, it up. Right. Yeah. We're supposed <laughs> to be Kentucky. Yeah. Right. What about Purdue? Talk to me about Purdue. Okay. I, okay. I think there's nothing in sports that you enjoy more than Purdue losing. Uh, uh Purdue losing at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Purdue, can't, Purdue's can't, a sick joke. Yeah, to it's me a sick joke today, yeah. this year because they're they're the only team that can win it all from the Big Ten. Right, We've been talking right. about the Big Ten forever, needing a national title. So, it's going to hurt us. So can they win it all, or are they going to fuck it up? They can win it all. I think this Purdue team's better than last year. Um, they the the guard play uh, has has first of all their guards are older. Uh, the, the the two white kids that were freshmen last year, um, they they are older and and they're way better. Like Braden Smith last year was like uh, a game manager more, and now he's he's actually a, a stud. Uh, and then Lance Jones, the kid they 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 got in the transfer portal, is fucking awesome. Um, so I I do think that Purdue is going to make a Final Four. I think they're better. Uh, but what worries me about Purdue is like they just can't resist being Purdue, and right. I don't mean that as like a LOL Purdue meme. Like I like watching them against Ohio State, they're one of the best three point shooting teams in the country now. Last year they couldn't shoot for shit. Now they they can. They're, they're hitting threes. They shot nine threes against Ohio State because they just cannot resist just trying to dump it into Edie over and over and over. Edie's awesome, but. I don't know what their plan B like they 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 don't incite they 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 don't give you confidence that they have a great plan B and that's what worries me about Purdue. The, like they, the Purdue's good though this year. They're better than than they have been in these like horrific exits. And I know the reason why I know this is because it's shifted now to you know last year it was like well their guards are so young like are they going to be able to stand up and they obviously didn't. To it's basically like wait till Zach Eady gets officiated different in right. March Madness. Right. That that is a sign that it's like oh they actually are pretty. They are good. good. Yeah, they are, right. yeah. No, they are if good. We're they clinging can, to that. They can definitely win a national championship. I just yeah like it, it's you know the Ohio State things one game and um you know you don't want to put too much stock in one game and they have been awesome all year but yeah I I I do worry that that's just like that they they just become so Eady dominant. That the rest of the guys are just standing around watching, um, but they are good. They they are legitimately they have a they they address their problems in the off season. Uh, I just like when when push comes to shove and assholes start getting tight in the NCAA tournament game, they're just going to revert back to what they know, which is dumping it into the post, which is great. But you know it's a guard oriented game in March, and and teams will like that's what uh, Fairly Dickinson did that to. Him. We were laughing at, at Dave. Small. Yeah, and the, and the family cave, but Dave just kept yelling they're too small. That's exactly what happened, and uh, I don't. I I still think the recipe to beat Purdue is the exact same, even though they've gotten a little better. Um, and everybody knows that. Like that's the other thing that worries me about that is like every single team knows how to beat Purdue. There's there's going to be no. The, the, you don't you don't need like the the quick turnaround of scout of like oh fuck we're playing Purdue like what is what do they do what are their tendencies like I feel like every team in the country knows how to beat them but the good thing for Purdue fans is like executing that is going to be difficult, difficult. yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, best league in the country Big Twelve yeah the Big Twelve is the best but like I don't find it the most interesting I think like you know? the Big East and the well it's SEC. because Houston is at the top and yeah is a, a, it feels Houston's like they're not great it feels like they're not yet Big Twelve well no, they, and, they're, and they're great and they're all, but they're hard to watch they're hard did you yeah. watch the Iowa State yes yeah yeah like, they're hard to watch both those teams are really good but I kind of right. like, I kind of love that game though because they were just beating the fuck out of each yeah, other yeah they for were a while. yeah but that I think that is why the Big Twelve like it is the best conference but. When it's Houston instead of Kansas up top, it just feels different. And that's it's, I know Houston fans will get mad about that, but it's just the facts. Yeah, he, I'm still trying to make sense of Houston because I, their defense is unbelievable. They're so good. Um, but yeah, I the Jamal Shedd is awesome, and 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 Cryer's great. Like I I do like their guards. Their guards are. It's going to be interesting because I I I wonder how much offense they can generate. I wonder if Shedd and Cryer are guys that you can. Uh, that that can just pull something out of their ass uh, offensively when they need to in March, and I don't know if they are, um, but they could. I could see them being that. Like I don't. Th yeah. th it's really. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're they're like right at the line for me of like how talented do you need your guards to be offensively? D defensively, they're fucking incredible. But uh, 
Like the Houston flame out in the tournament feels like they lost a game like fifty three to to forty nine. Right, they couldn't score, but they played great defense. Right, yeah, I'll rebound them by like yeah. twenty rebounds. Yeah, still yeah, can't get a shot. A li- yeah, like the, it's just a disgusting game. They go like twenty one percent from three. Yeah, and they but they still take they took like twenty of them because they're like we're desperate. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, um, but no, the, I, I I like Houston a lot, and I think the fact that they went to the Big Twelve. Um, it is is going to help them immensely, obviously, because they're they're in a tough conference and they're playing well. What I what I do love is there's so many fans that were that are fans of teams in the Big Twelve that kept saying to Houston like just wait till just you wait. play in a real yeah. conference, just yeah. wait, yeah, just wait till 2024. You're gonna feel yeah. what real basketball is like, and they come in, they're still really fun. Like we're good. gonna we're gonna win your league. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I respect really that. What about Texas? Uh, they have a chance. Also, why is his name pronounced Asmus? I don't know. I never understood that. He's really fucking good. Yeah, he is. So he can tell you how to pronounce his name whatever way he wants, but A B, how does that make the sound? I, I've A-C? never I've never really understood that. Um I don't know. The, the the problem with the Big Twelve for me is there are a lot of teams that but but it's that way kind of across all of college basketball. Because like there there are good teams, certainly, and Texas is one of them, but I no, I don't think Texas is going to a final four or winning like they're not a serious national title contender. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, they're in the middle of the Big yeah. Twelve. Yeah, and like all those teams are kind of that way. Like I don't, I would say, Houston's really the only team I I think has a shot at winning. Like Iowa State fans won't want to hear that. Kansas is supposed to be good, but like I think even Kansas fans kind of realize that this team's not it. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the the rest of the teams are are good, and they're gonna the the Big Twelve is like more of like a. Uh, a numbers game where it's like we're not going to win the national championship, but we are going to have five teams in the lead eight. And yeah, like, you're going to have to respect us because uh-huh. we we just like overwhelm you with how many good teams we have. But then when you look up, like none of those teams are actually winning the national championship. Houston could though. Yeah, Houston mm-hmm. could, though. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I yeah, the Big Twelve is and they they and are TCU. The best TCU is another team I like, but like I don't think they're TCU. Uh, Dixon really screwed us because we went and did a TCU uh, college football show, and we had him on, and he was like, "We're gonna run like the the yeah. Showtime Lakers." Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh fuck, I'm gonna bet the over in every yeah. single one of their games." And they they do run, but they don't make shots like the Showtime Lakers. So I've lost a lot of. Money There's a guy, uh, Jordan Sperber, who does awesome uh, breakdowns. Uh, if you're like a basketball geek and want to see like x's and o stuff he's he's like a film nut but he uh he, ah, that only got fifty four thousand views yeah, JJ yeah right, Reddick, right. <laughs> zion williamson yeah what uh, a what a great humble brag so, by jj reddick yeah. being like this this boring thing it only got four fifty i i feel views. his pain because like i i'm like the smartest fucking guy in the world and like i kind of do i prove it on my show over and over and over again and uh <laughs> I think the reason my show isn't the number one sports podcast is because I'm probably too smart. You're too, yeah, smart. too smart. I'm too smart for the fans average. Fans don't want fan. it. Yeah, uh, I got to dumb yeah. it down. Listen, oh, you can do fans. X's and O's, but or you can get Cat Williams to come on a show and call everyone in Hollywood <laughs> gay. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then you get sixty million views. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so what are you saying? Oh, uh, say Sperber always puts together. He takes the uh, the intro press conferences when coaches get hired in the off season. Literally every single coach is, says we're gonna push pace. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run and gun. We're gonna yeah, and then and then he he oftentimes will do like an update and be like, here's their pace actually. Here's like what they're actually <laughs> their, their offense is actually doing. But every single intro press conference, the coach is like, one of the tenets of our program, we're gonna push it. We're gonna we're gonna get good shots. We're gonna we're gonna put points on the board. Um, and then reality hits. But, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a fact. All right, I, so w- let's talk about the Big East real quick because uh, Max over there, Villanova. Uh-oh. They they are we're running this tomorrow. It you can't have a worse setup than Villanova being like starting to play some good basketball. Max had talked himself mm-hmm. into the UConn game. Now it's game day is in stores. They're coming off a twenty point loss where Danny Hurley was like, <laughs> yeah. "I coached bad. The players played bad." <laughs> And now Villanova has to go play there. And Danny Hurley's releasing uh, Game, of Game of Thrones gifs, yeah, and videos. This feels like an ass kicking. It's this gonna a, be a like fucking ass-kicking. biblical ass kicking for Max and Villanova. Are you in on our Nova, Max? I I can't. Oh yeah, I'm. I go with it with whatever way the last game goes. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's all a in, I'm all in that or all out fan. after fan. every single game. And the last three ga- three games, double digit wins or three wins by double digit points. Yeah. And now you got to go play UConn. So, uh, is there a team in the Big East besides UConn, and we'll say Creighton as well? Yeah, we have uh, Greg McDermott on this show, uh, who can make a deep run. Marquette, obviously. 
Yeah, I think I think Marquette's. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just because of the Badgers. Because the Badgers, and yeah. I don't think the Badgers are that good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Seton Hall's been 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 great. Um, it won't I, happen though because they're Frank. Yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah. they also Frank's not allowed Frank. to have happiness. Seton Hall's like an auto bet at home type of team. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm drinking the Butler Kool Aid. I they're on the bubble. Oh, why? Who's their coach? Who is their coach? Yeah, look it up. Oh, who is their coach? Their do you do you know their coach? You don't know their I don't coach. Know, actually. Do, they? do you know their coach? Nova's the fourth best. Oh, it's Thad Mata. Oh, that's oh, oh did he? Where did yeah. he coach? Oh, well, good for him. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I'm drinking the Shit, I, I I I was drinking the Butler Kool Aid, but now I'm really drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, <there>. um, <laughs> they're so fun to watch. They 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 won at Creighton and at Marquette. Yeah, we're talking about like you want to see teams that go win on the road. They won. They they have two impressive road wins. Villanova could could do something. Do something. They're the fourth best team in the Big East. Yeah, you're probably right. When, yeah. when they when the, when they're at their best. Yeah, yeah. there's a there's a it's fall off. To be proud of. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a fall. They've looked like the th third worst team in the Big East for a lot of the year, but talent wise, they're the, at least the fourth best team in the Big East. Mm. Talent wise, yeah. talent wise. That's yeah, the the, the Big East is uh the Big East is is the most fun league to me. I think. Um, well, it's all basketball. It's, it's just, just yeah, it's just, it's just pure basketball. The fans are obsessed. Uh, it's all they care about. Um, the coaches are are incredible characters. Yep, through and through. Um. Yeah, and and I do think a lot of these teams can can go. On. I I do like bias aside. I do think Butler. Uh, I I I do think that they they're not going to go to Final Four, but um, <laughs> that was bias included. They're fun. <laughs> well, you're. At, I don't know what you mean by a deep run, but yeah, like Butler can make the Sweet Sixteen. Butler bias aside, may not make the tournament. No, I know that, but like right, that's, that but, would but be the bias team. aside. <laughs> there's a team. They're going to make the tournament. Are they? Yeah, they'll make the tournament. But there's a team every year that plays in the play and that 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 makes some makes a little run. Yeah, no, you're right. Every year there's a team that's on the bubble that makes a run. I'm saying they're, Butler could be that team. Their last four in right now, according to Lenardi. They'll make it in. Okay. Can I say something in. about the play in? I just uh, I've decided I hate the play in. Mm, Why is I, that? I don't like it because it, it's an afterthought. Even though it comes before, mm -mm. I don't like the play in at all. I I, I think I I want my tournament to start on Thursday. I like yeah. it being clean Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The ones the teams don't get the shine if they play in the play, and nobody remembers if you play in the play and lose. Yeah, uh, it's I I understand why they want more teams in there. They want to be able to throw like some sixteen seeds in and get them out of the way, and uh, it just it are some some higher some uh, teams that won their conference. How would you feel that if do they that they don't want to give shine to on a Thursday? If they called it the play in and they and you didn't actually get an NCAA tournament, you didn't get to put on a banner in your arena that like NCAA tournament appearances, you didn't get to put that on there unless you won the play in. I'm if fine with was, that. If it was truly like this is not the NCAA tournament. Yes. This is this is purely a play in. The tournament starts on Thursday, but we're still gonna keep the exact same format. We're just gonna rebrand yes. it. Yeah, the games so can stay. Help? The I, ga like I'm not in favor of I like more sports on TV. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But if you just do if you have like four at large teams that play on that Wednesday. You don't call it the tournament. Yeah. But if you win, you get in the tournament. I'm fine with that. I just sixty eight isn't as cool. Sixty four is a way better yeah. number when it comes to a bracket. I like to play in because it's an appetizer. Right. It gets you warmed up. And I also think that UCLA uh kind of like legitimized the play in when they went to the final four from the play in. Yeah. Like that that was it. Like this right. like, I'm happy they got in. You know, yeah. like I we need the play in. So I, I just I like the appetizer. It gets me warmed up. I do think that this idea that we're going to have, like, whatever the number is, 132. I hate that. Yeah. That sucks. 64 is the perfect number. And I, I, I agree, like, with UCLA, they could have played in that as an at-large. And, yeah, you get into the tournament that way. It would be fun. I just – I don't like the number 68. I feel like 64 is way better. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I guess you could just, like, not watch until Thursday morning. Not an option. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Too. That's why I like that it is, because I'll it always is. watch it. You put it on TV, yeah. I'm going to watch it. And it also feels like, ooh, nice. This team could get – who else I, did I don't it? know why I said that because it, it isn't an option. Yeah. I, I say the same shit sometimes. Like, people will say the same shit to me about – like, I'm like, I hate watching – 
Like, I, I don't feel this way about Houston, but if you find Houston basketball disgusting and you're just like, I fucking, I can't watch this kind of basketball, people will say, well, just don't watch. And it's like, I, I mean, I have to watch. Yeah. You also have to They're, realize that. I'm not going to watch one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. The play-in is objectively hilarious, too, for the teams that do lose, like Brandon Walker's Mississippi State last year. Yes. Like, he didn't make the tournament. Yes. TJ, the Rutgers lost a few years. Right. Ago. They didn't make the tournament. That you get to tough. do that with your friends. Right. We're like, you weren't really in the tournament. Right, right. So I love the play-in. Right. I do like to play, and I do think that it should be official, though. I do think that Mississippi State last year should have officially not made the yes. tournament. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that, but they I just like the idea they should, that they should keep it. You can basically pl play like it, the plan is basically a choose your own adventure where it's like the losing teams, you can be like, yeah, they didn't make it. There's the always teams, there's always like, somebody that argues that we should not make the 16s play, but I think the 16s want to play. Yeah. That's, that's another thing. They like get they, a chance yeah. to win a tournament game. Right. That's cool. Like right. they don't otherwise, I and I get it. They want to play against a one seed. That's yeah. cool, but like, I don't know. It's I I like the plan. I'm a big yeah. I'm a big fan of the plan. Uh, all right, Pac-12, real quick. Arizona swan song. Arizona's yeah. for real. Arizona is for real. They play Washington State tonight. Yeah, it should be a great game. Great game. Washington State's the second best team in the Pac-12. Yeah. Um, is there a chance though that Tommy Lloyd spent a little too much time with Mark Few, and he's always going to be just I close enough i know he's got a little too much mark few well arizona uh purdue losing last year is the greatest thing that happened to, to tommy lloyd yeah nobody remembers that arizona lost to prince 15 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no you're right they, they were the two seed right yeah he's he's been he's also he is starting to get into that range of like i, I think that's why he lost some of these games this year because arizona is they, they are very good and their national title good and the final fours in phoenix which is an interesting wrinkle mm -hmm. um and the Pac-12 having its last year, like there's a lot of stars aligning for the Arizona redemption. Uh, but I think uh, they're not having quite as good of a year as they probably should be. And I think that might be on purpose because Tommy Lloyd was getting way too many of those graphics that are like, this is the hottest start anybody's ever had to yeah. a college basketball coaching career. Um and you don't want that when when you've had the last two tournament exits they've had. Like, yep. like Houston was way better than them the the year that they lost. Uh, that was a Sweet Sixteen at least. Um, but Houston just like manhandled them when Arizona is probably the best team in the country a couple years ago. And then you lose to a 15 seed last year. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't want to say Tommy Lloyd like he just signed an extension, and I think like most people realize he is an incredible. He's still like two or three years away from getting the narrative the mark but yeah but there's been a couple but, like they lost at oregon state i want to say and then that he, game at home where they struggled with ucla for the entire game right they like, let stanford score 100 on him but i think i think that's smart i think he's got to show more cracks in the regular season oh if you're, if you're yeah. dominant through the regular season and then you fuck it up in march that's true that's know, what gonzaga that's, used that's to do what yeah. looks yeah. embarrassing but yeah. if you have like seven or eight losses entering the tournament and you lose in the sweet 16 it's not a bad year yeah it's, it's not a, a bad year it's like izzo right he, yeah, he limps in the tournament sometimes. You don't expect right. it. That you're like, what a great coach. Yeah, like if Michigan State makes the Sweet 16 this year, that's going to feel like a great incredible accomplishment. accomplishment. Yeah, they yeah. were. They, you picked them. Yeah, the picked them. Yeah. Well, they're a great team. Tennessee. They're a fantastic team. Very hard to beat right. at home, especially early on in the season. You're a national title contender right. if you go in and you and, and you defeat Michigan mm -hmm. State when they're what ranked number four at the time. Yep, you'd have to be a great should, team to do that. You should get an auto bid to the NCAA tournament, right? Yeah, agreed. Let's talk Sun Belt, Mark. Yeah. No, we won't <laughs> talk Sun Belt. Uh, ACC. So yep. I miss. I'm gonna say it. I miss Coach K. Big time. I miss yeah. having him around. I miss. I miss the rivalries. I miss him lecturing people. I miss getting to talk about Coach K. And it feels like uh, it's not just Duke, but like the so a little bit of the shine is off the ACC now without yeah. Coach K. It is. Uh, Duke is sneaky putting it together a little bit right now. Um, but yeah, it's not the same. Uh, Carolina's. I, I. I think it's beyond Coach K. Like. The ACC lost a lot of characters. They lost Roy. They lost Bayheim. They lost Mike Bray, who nobody talks about. Dude, how about Bayheim uh, calling games? Yeah, and it's per I like I turned on a random ACC game the other day, and he, I was like, "Is this Bayheim?" And he was just so curmudgeon. Yes. I was like, "It is Bayheim." I don't like him calling games. <laughs> yeah. he, he should be the uh, the halftime and the, the yeah. Game it was so weird. Back. He should be in the studio. He was just kind of in his be. whiny voice, yeah. and I was just like, "What is going on right yeah. now?" Yeah, but yeah, we lost a lot of ACC guys. Yeah. Um. And and Virginia is still like technically one of the better teams in the conference, and now Virginia is is as bad as like when Virginia, Virginia had those good teams, and everyone was like, "This team cannot score the basketball." They were wrong. They actually could. They just like played slow, but they were like their offense was incredible. They had NBA players, and and they got good shots, and they made them. Um, 
this is actually what Virginia basketball was to all the people back in the day. Um, this specific Virginia team is disgusting, just disgusting basketball. They play great defense. They cannot score to save their lives. And the problem the ACC has is that they are still one of the better teams in the ACC. Uh, and they are they are just like they are very very offensive. Yeah, when they're when they're good when they when they win games, you can be like, this is if you're a real basketball head, you love Virginia basketball because they suffocate you, they smother you. Yeah, they're careful, they're deliberate. But then when they can't score, it's just like this is bad basketball. It's bad basketball. All yeah. What is what is Tony Bennett's philosophy on uh, just like how he plays? Like what what is the driving force be behind why he chooses to play such a weird brand of basketball? Uh, his dad, I think. Yeah. I think it was just like his Wisconsin. dad. Yeah, his dad yeah. did it, and he did it that way. Um, it's just it literally is just was like you if you're from Wisconsin, you got to play boring basketball. Yeah. I don't know. Like it, it makes sense in like an antiquated way, where it's like we're, we want to work for a good shot. Work the ball. Wait till you get a like. If don't don't shoot bad shots, that checks out. Like the um, value of each possession. Yeah, I th I think like there was a lot of like the pack line defense is like make them shoot further from the basket, which like was smart strategy in the eighties. Yeah, and then now it's like that's where everybody wants to shoot. From. Yeah, like, I also think it's uh, like a lot of these teams. Virginia, obviously, you said when they won the national title, they had NBA dudes, but. It's smart when you have a team that maybe doesn't have like that one or two guys that can can beat everyone off the dribble. It's like, all yeah. right, we're gonna work as a team to get these good shots. Right, right. And yeah. now, yeah, the introduction of the ball screen has uh, just completely changed. <laughs> uh -huh. Somewhere along the and Steph Curry, it was it was the ball screen plus Steph Curry that have just revolutionized this game. If only Steph Curry would have been recruited by any team that was around him when he was growing. Right. Up. Yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah. I, I, you know what? In all the in all the uh, Steph Curry Virginia Tech angles i've thought of and never did cross my mind that like virginia plays the pack line and yeah they give up threes and they're fine giving up threes and steph curry could have gone to virginia tech yeah just fucking dude it, rain threes on virginia really really virginia should have recruited steph curry because if they yeah. knew, everyone should if they knew <laughs> yeah true but but especially virginia because if they knew that tech wasn't recruiting him at least you get the opportunity to be like we got this guy and it's a big fuck you to virginia yeah. tech right yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a big miss. That's a, I wonder if that that should be recruiting strategies. Like recruit the guys, recruit the sons that the the dad's alma mater doesn't want. Yeah, and yeah, then you can be like the whole to, time, like they didn't want you. Yeah, and fire you up that way. Yeah, that's a yeah, good yeah, yeah. All right, we got to mention the Mountain West so Mountain West fans don't get mad. Yeah, they they're starting to piss me off, Mountain West fans. I don't know why. why I that? think because there was the narrative that they couldn't do it in the tournament, then San Diego State. Maybe it's just one guy. Last night I was watching that that awesome, awesome yeah. uh, New Mexico Colorado State game, and someone's like, "Oh, just finding out about the Mountain West." Like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, I fucking watched the Mountain West. Yeah, I fucking lost. I'm pretty sure that UNLV threw a game against Air Force like a month ago that I bet on, and I watched every possession of. They lost by like thirty. I watched the Mountain so, West. So they got like it, hockey fan energy. Yeah, they're a little like, bit like, like oh, be, now you're to be clear, attention to the Mountain West. To be clear, this is one fan. No, but they, <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's, it's one guy. No, that Mountain West fans. At. No, well, Mountain West fans do have a little chip on their shoulder. Yeah, because they, I mean, it's an earned chip because they did have all those years where it was great basketball to watch, and then they get to the tournament, and they'd be out in like, remember the year they were out in ten hours? Right. Yeah. yeah. So like they yeah, have I a do. chip. I do remember that. But I like uh, Mountain West. It's fun, fun basketball. It's been great this year. It's 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 so fun. They might get six bids. Yeah. Yeah. Um the UNLV should not make it for that one game I'm talking about. But they uh they have the same problem PFT said. It's like whoever's at home. Yeah. Is, is well, no, they winner. lost at home by th by 30 to Air Force. I'm pretty sure they they Oh, UNLV. Did you talk about sure UNLV? That was yeah. a yeah. point shaving game. Um <laughs> Yeah, I can't make sense of who who the best team in the Mountain West is. I have no idea. It, it depends on basically what I just saw. I think New Mexico probably has the highest ceiling. Yeah. Like they feel like the team that uh, they they make the most sense to me. I like their guards and and um, but yeah, Utah Utah State is probably the answer. They're probably going to win the league, right? Uh, the one thing that worries me about Utah State, they haven't played a single power conference team all year. I, yeah, I, I when I realized that that like that definitely worried me. Um, San Diego State is like when the bracket comes out, I'm going to make San Diego State go the furthest of any Mountain West team, though. Yeah, because like, I it's just. It's last year bias, but it's also like they, they do have the pedigree. And they were the one team that like they've never had obviously a final four run, but like they were the one team that would have some semblance of success. Right. Out of the Mountain West. Right. Like they at least like would go to a sweet sixteen every so often. Yeah. Um so I, I think San Diego State will probably end up still being the the team, but yeah, fun league.
It Very is fun. fun. Like, it, it is. It has become the league that's like. If if you don't know what game to watch, just throw on a random ass Mountain West game. It might be the hipsters basketball. Game. Yeah, that's what, that's it, what is. it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. It does have that energy because it is like every night you can watch. It's what a the great a, Mountain the West A10 game. used to be that way. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And and the Mountain West has kind of become that. Yeah, you know? you're right. Where it used to be like, oh yeah, no one's talking about VCU, yeah. Dayton, all this. You're you're absolutely right. The Mountain West is the new A10. This this Richmond, yeah, yeah. Um, watch out for Bonnie's St. Bonaventure game. Yeah, popping off. Yeah. 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 The Mr. Beer guy, he he actually uh I think his name was Dom. Awesome dude. Remember the the St. Bonnie's fan who used to wear the beer uh hat and they'd show him at every game. Captain just, Beer. Captain Beer. <laughs> that's he awesome. did an awesome move. He passed down the hat. That's good. He graduated. Oh, that's a good that's so a there's smart, a new yeah. Captain yeah. Beer. Keep the that's a fucking alive. great move. That's a great move for yeah. college basketball. Like if you're a fan and you're in the student section, can you imagine continuing to go back to that fan section? Maybe wearing the same sunglasses, the same <laughs> same sunglasses that you've worn every single year. That'd be weird. He came to the office and he, he brought us some merch, some Captain Beer merch. <laughs> that bit. Guy rocks. Uh, speaking of TJ, uh, how awesome is it getting to host a uh, daily show? Which I love, by the way, mostly sports. You have a, a yeah, you guys have cast both, of characters. Uh, yeah, both. Uh, you got. I mean, I love TJ. I love Ebo. Love Connor. You got everybody. So Cody, uh, it's got Cody. Cody it's yep. got it's got to be a great time hosting that show. Fun, uh, yeah, it's it's fun hosting, especially when you guys are are hosting it with me. Yeah, you know, that's that's when I enjoy it the most. Is when uh, I look across the desk and I see uh, face I respect, like you, one of you two, like one of us. I, yeah, I, I should thank you though, um, because you doing mostly sports with what's his name, Brendan, Brendan yeah, Walker, Brendan. Bre Brendan. Brendan, Brendan Walker, There's no D. Uh, you doing mostly sports with Brendan Walker has definitely cleared my schedule a little bit with uh, his anxiety phone calls. I'm oh, assuming yeah. they're going to you because yeah. I know they're not fixed. Yeah. I assume they're just going to you. He does. He helps my anxiety because I have a ton of anxiety as well. But okay. then I see Brandon and I'm like, do I look like that? Yeah, yeah. It, it like forces you into yeah. a uh, like a, a leadership role. With yeah, exactly. Like you have to calm him down. Somebody has to. It put it forces right. you into perspective about yourself. Yeah, yeah. It really does. Um, but no, we 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 love the show. It's been great. We we love that. Uh, yeah, you guys help out with the show when 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 asked when called uh, upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when called upon. It's been a fun show. Now, is, is it going to be a disappointment for you if you don't get ranked as the number one college basketball personality? Uh. No, cause I, I don't know. I don't know what's funnier is it if I do or if, um, the funniest outcome would be if you were ranked number like two or three, and then Brennan Walker got you a giant banner to hang up that said like number says number three. Two. Yeah, yeah, number college two, basketball yeah, personality. Yeah. yeah, that's probably that's probably true. Are um, are you guys still in the honeymoon? Where like have you, has have you had the time? Because this happens to every show that's ever been created on the internet. Where like I don't know a year in everyone's like this show sucks now. There's, uh, we're not there yet, but <laughs> okay, I feel good. it. Uh, Brandon pointed out that we have like a Reddit now. And, oh, that's uh, yeah, that's the uh, first start. Then yeah. it's over. Yeah, but then, no. But then Brandon made the mistake where he's like, we, we apparently have a Reddit and everybody's super nice. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah for now it's gonna that's, turn. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Some 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 light advice: take it or leave it. Uh, just don't read the Reddit. Yeah, yeah, never go on it. Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about it. We do have this problem, and I don't know if you guys can relate. Uh, Connor, who's like kind of a side character. But we let him use. We let him talk uh, every so often. He's a big Philly guy, yeah. And uh, his opinions about Philly sports just fucking stink, yeah. And uh, so we get a lot of shit where it's like, "Shut this Philly asshole up, please. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear from this Philly piece of shit." Um, and I don't know why I'm asking. I, I it, it's just something that like we're trying. We to don't deal have. With. I don't like, know if I'm I can help to, you out with yeah, that one. We don't have that problem. We're trying to deal with that. Uh, like we how because we 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 enjoy it, but also like the fans just hate his fucking guts. Yeah. It's, and that's a little weird. Well, so. he's not Italian though, <laughs> so you're you're good. Because the Ita I think Max's personality is more Italian than Philly. Sometimes it's a lethal combination <laughs> where, where, where he'll start a sentence and finish it with his hands. We were like, dude, I don't know sign language. We weren't talking about me. <laughs> no, we're talking about Connor. No, yeah, 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 we're yeah. talking about Connor. Well, you just said my yeah. name. Well, no, because I was nothing. saying like as long as Connor's not Italian or becomes Italian, you should be okay. What is he, Irish? German Irish? He looks yeah, you're German. Fine. You're fine. fine. He's Irish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Connor's an Irish name. Connor yeah. Griffin? He has yeah. great yeah, yeah, probably yeah. Irish. I assume he's <laughs> Irish. <laughs> probably I, redhead. <laughs> yeah, people get pissed off when you have that one guy that uh, his name starts with E and he always talks about JMU. Yeah. That's a bad person to have on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, national title. And we're going to have you back on, obviously, for the brackets when they are yep. announced. 
But uh, give it to us. Give maybe give us a final four. Okay, final which, four. Which is uh, impossible to do without a bracket. Yeah, it's also impossible because I I did have this realization the other day that uh, I don't think I can think of four teams that I trust to win four NCAA tournament games in a row right now, mm. which is a problem because four teams will, by definition, four teams. I trust UConn. Uh, UConn and Purdue feel obvious. I mean, like that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna just okay. All right, I have to think this through. Um. Because everybody wants you to pick like a, a a wild card, but the reason they are a wild card is because they've kind of sucked this year, you right? Know? So like, the, why would I pick them? Uh I I think Purdue is going to make the Final Four. I I said that at the start of the year. I think Purdue is going to get their redemption in the sense that they're going to make the Final Four and not win a national championship. Uh I do feel like Houston's defense is Houston is uh, the, the jump up to the Big Twelve is going to help them immensely, and I I I have to trust Houston. Um, I don't think UConn's going to do it. Oh, mm. I think UConn is good. I think UConn is is very very good. I just think like back to back championships is hard. Back to back Final Fours is very hard, and uh, yeah, I, I I like UConn. Like even Villanova did like. They, Villanova was the in, the year in between the national title. Like they, Villanova had an awesome team, and they, yeah. they got tripped up. It, like you get who the, who beat them? I can't remember. Who cares? I, I can't remember. Second round. Uh, oh, you didn't even uh, get out of the second round. You were the one seed. I'll take a, a second round exit sandwich between. But who did natties. beat them? Who did beat them? I who, who cares? I'm just asking. I'm nervous. Uh, like we're, we're it seems like you know the answer. No, I don't. Like you know the Jake, answer. Do you know the answer? Yeah, it was the Wisconsin bad. Oh, oh fuck. Okay. It was Wisconsin. That's, yeah, that's a coincidence like bad right. Matt Mata. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I think UConn's in a position right now where the, the foreseeable future they will be national title contenders. But I'm going to pick them to have, to get tripped up like in the Sweet 16 this year. Uh, so I got Purdue. I'll, I'll take Houston. Give me Arizona because I like that. That's a, sexy, this, that's a sexy idea of like Arizona being in Phoenix in the Final Four last year, the Pac-12. And then I got to ride with Tennessee, who okay. I said, Big Cat, when you when you came on my show. Yeah, they were one of my picks. And we we talked about national title picks. Uh, yeah, we threw out Michigan State and Tennessee. Yeah, so you and, picked three number ones and a number two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who do you, what's the let me pull a bracket matrix. What do you want me to pick? What's what's low <laughs> enough? To, <laughs> well, I was going to pick quit, Indiana State, but right now in Lenardi's, I can't quit Kentucky. Yeah, uh, Kentucky's probably going to be like a six seed. They're they're five seed maybe. Yeah. Um, I'll go with. Well, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I, I did pick uh, Nebraska. <laughs> not Nebraska. I'll pick. Uh, <laughs> I'll pick Ole Miss. Okay. Um, nice. Vermont. Yep. Give me Nevada. Yep. Uh, and South Florida. Actually, South Florida is. Yeah, they are. South Florida is. <laughs> they're very fun. <laughs> South they're Florida's very, a fun very team. Fun. Yeah. They. Uh. They. They. They want to. Big time trap spot last night. Dude, time. fuck it. I'll pick Butler in the final four then. Love take it. Out, take out. Uh, I can't wait to Butler. Doesn't take out Houston it. and put in Butler. Yeah. Give me your NIT final four. <laughs> uh, Buckeyes. Buckeyes are back. We okay. Purdue, so we're back in the NIT picture. Um, Buckeyes JMU. There we go. <laughs> Buckeyes JMU. I would love that. Beautiful. And that was, uh, would that we was, have uh, to go? That was, yeah, we should. That was a yeah, women's. Have to go. Wait, was that a women's like round of 16 game last year? Because I think me and you bet on that, right? You know what? Now that I think about it, that was my uh, – yeah, we did, and I think I owe you something. It was a mustache bet. Right? Yeah. I had to there were so many bets going on. Yeah. The, I, it was such a whirlwind because I, I, that was my welcome to Barstool moment uh, in terms of the gambling was uh, we bet on the Ohio State JMU women – Ohio State won by like twenty three or something, and PFT was cackling in my face like, "Ha ha, you gotcha. lose, gotcha!" Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> your gotcha, face, your ass, loser. <laughs> yeah, I don't like looking at bracketology right now because I'm. I just pulled it up and Wisconsin's playing Indiana State in the first round, and that's a loss. Jake, I have a question for that's you with uh, bracketology. Um, how do you feel about Joe Lenardi becoming the lightning rod for like any time a coach has a problem with how his where where he's at? In, in the bracketing, they just they go after Lenardi. Uh, he gets so much shit, and I don't necessarily think Lenardi's the best bracketologist, but I just find it fascinating that Joe Lenardi has created this industry where he's just like, here's what I think the selection committee is going to do. And then every time around this year, 
like a, a team that's on the bubble, their coach will do a press conference where like, oh, one more thing by, before I go, fuck you, Joe Lenardi. <laughs> like, well, Joe Lenardi's like, what did I do? Yeah. Well, Mark, as someone who <laughs> tried going down the path of being a bracketologist for one season, I can tell you that role is absolute hell. Yeah. Yeah, there is no sucks, way to make right? anyone happy. I left Wisconsin out of my preseason bracket two years ago. <laughs> and they and got the a three did seed. not shut up about well, it. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Because <laughs> yeah. so, you just copied whatever they said. I wanted a, a true, <laughs> real bracketologist. They were projected not to do well that year. Projected? Who projects? It's it's an impossible job. Yeah. It is impossible. There is it, no way to make anybody happy. It's impo- it is impossible. I, I agree with that. But then the funny part about it is it's actually, like, super easy because yeah. – when when you're when you're forecasting the field in the NCAA tournament, you're basically you're looking at like a pool of like eight teams, yeah, and you're picking five of those eight to make the tournament. Correct. That's really all it comes down Correct. to. Correct. Um, and somehow, I don't know, how, but just like the idea that Lenardi is the only one that like, would you take that as a point of pride though, Jake? They like you're the guy that everybody wants to attack. Are you like? This is fucking insane. Why is everybody coming to I think the fact dad? that ESPN has the rights to like eighty five percent of college basketball games, he's that, the easiest yeah. target. Yeah. He, well, he was yeah. the first. It is he, true. He did right. invent a, a field of study. The it's, fact that he put ology at the end of it makes it seem like it yeah. much more of a science. There's a part-time class you could take with him. He, I don't know uh, if it still exists. It's it's not really his opinions though. That's what I find hilarious about it. It's like Joe Joe no. Lenardi he, in his mind, he's like, "This is science, dude. Like, I'm not. Yeah, he's just doing what they I think will, they will yeah, do. Yeah. Right, right. Like, you don't see people coming for Jerry Palm. Right, right. It's all Lenardi. It's always Lenardi, and uh, and he's just like every time he's on TV, he's just like the biggest teddy bear looking dude. And the idea that like these coaches are behind closed doors is <laughs> like, fuck, we gotta fucking kill this guy. It's just one guy that's like <laughs> locked in his basement, the and, bunker. Uh, also, yeah. Jerry Palm, you can't go at him because his hair. Like, what are you gonna say? Like, yeah, that's true. you that's just true. look at him and you're like, that your hair, true. dude. <laughs> like he kind of he kind of just put a speed bump in front of all haters. It's like we're gonna make fun of that. Look at his hair. So, That's it. You're so, out of the bracketology game. Forever? I did it for one season, and it was a huge mistake. Yeah, I've been trying to find <laughs> like a, a field for Blake to get into because Leroy's thing was breaking news, and he was yeah. really good at it. Blake might become a, a bracketologist. Should we have should him do a, a whole bracket? You should become a CBI bracketologist. Yeah. <laughs> he could he could be a, a bracketologist. Maybe he could also be like an NFL news aggregator, like a Dove Kleinman. Yeah, yeah, um, NFL football. Yeah, but yeah, maybe maybe bracketology, Blakeetology. Yeah, Ooh, that works. That, but yeah, you got to. It can't be the, the NCAA or the NIT. It should be the CBI or CBI. whatever the, the, the CIT. CIT. I don't even know if that exists anymore. <laughs> CIT. <laughs> yeah. That would rock. If it was a CBI, or or it would be even better if he was like bracketologist for like the Maui tournament. Yeah. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like we already know who's gonna play next yeah. year. Just make Maybe, the bracket. Yeah. Or just do champ week where it's predetermined. Oh, yeah. do Yeah, yeah there you go. Conference <laughs> championship week bracketology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, um, you, you talk about Tennessee. I want to circle back to them real quick because I yeah. there are two teams I bet on preseason. One is Houston. The other is Tennessee. And I feel like I'm getting big T poisoning in my ears all the time. But I still they're a very fun team to watch. I actually think they would have been good last year. If Ziegler didn't tear it wait, towards ACL, yeah, yeah, and he he didn't play in the tournament. Yeah, last year felt like I don't know. If it, I just like the guy because he's like five eight, but he's fun to watch. Um, Dalton Connect might be the most electric scorer in college. He basketball. is, he's yeah, so he's, fun. He's just like he is. It's just, the the problem with guys like him is when he's not on and it's it, and it's not all there. Uh, he'll drive you insane because he is he is he does get a little he like spaces out. On uh, when he's playing, like he doesn't play defense, and he doesn't really, like sometimes offensively, he's like kind of doesn't understand what the rest of the team is doing. But like when he's rolling, he's 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 the most electric scorer in college basketball, absolutely. Which is the reason I've talked myself into Tennessee all season, even as they lose. Um, I trust that, like like because the Rick Barnes and March thing is very real, but it's also uh, he's he made the Sweet Sixteen last year, and like it is it is like a and he's made a Final Four before in his life. Um, so I don't. I don't fully understand what I, I I like Dan. You'll say you'll be like Rick Barnes and March, and I'm like, yes, yeah. exactly. What what does that mean again? It like, just what does means it mean? they're just like, gonna lo- you just visualize he's, it. He's not going like, to win a national championship. Or yeah, like he's no. They're just you just you just close your eyes and you're like, oh yeah, there he goes right down the tunnel. Uh, Sixteen lost. I can't but visualize tennis- him like for a week leading up to the Final Four, like doing all the press conferences, talking about getting his team ready for a Final Four. I just don't see Rick Barnes in that role. But, but he's done yeah. it. He's very good. He's done it. He's made a final four. Yeah, but he's very so good. Like, but he just—it's Rick Barnes in March. Yeah. Um. 
But I, I think this team is different than the Tennessee teams of the past because of Dalton Connect and, and Zakai Ziegler is a great great offensive uh, player too, and he's he's gotten a lot better throughout his career. So um, yeah, they yeah, have it, a good they have a good offense. They they do it's have totally different. They have offensive weapons in a way they haven't since basically Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield, which is a team that you know, ha ha Rick Barnes in March, but like that. If you remember that tournament, twenty nineteen, that was. Like Tony Bennett, Virginia fucked that all up for for Purdue and 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 Tennessee because like all three of those teams in that bracket were good enough to make a Final Four. All those games were close. Like Purdue Purdue Tennessee game was awesome. Uh, one team had to win. Whoever was going to lose that game was going to get point and laughed at and be like, "You always fucked this up in March." And then the next round, the exact same thing happened with Purdue and Virginia, where Purdue had Virginia beat. Virginia wins on a or sends it the. Uh, they they won they won on the last second shot, um, and uh, that's how Purdue loses. And uh, now all of a sudden it's like Purdue can't get it done in March. I don't know. It, 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 this shit drives me crazy because it, like, it makes no Narratives. fucking sense. But then it kind of does make sense. Yeah, Mark Gonzaga's never going to make it. But what I was forward. saying, the point was r this team offensively, it, I trust more than any team since the 2019 Tennessee team. And yes, that team lost in the Sweet 16. But if you go back and see how they lost in the Sweet 16, Rick Barnes. like, <laughs> yeah. See how you did that. Rick Barnes looked at his calendar. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Walked right into that. All right. Well, Titus. Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes. But that's the Rick problem. Barnes, is Rick like Barnes, who, Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes. March. Who's who? Who? Who do we trust that's going to win a national championship this year? Dan Cause like, early because I saw it last year. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> yeah, that's that's literally it. It's like these other guys oh, haven't proven they can win. It's like it's like Bill Self. Are we going to trust Houston? Like Houston's made one. Kelvin Sims made one Final Four as a Mickey Mouse run to the Final. No, four. it's Bill Self. And Tommy Lloyd chokes in March. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Matt Painter chokes. It's Bill Self and Danny Hurley. Barnes chokes. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And if Jay Wright wants to come back, I'll trust That's him it. too. Mm -hmm. That's it. But Jay Wright's another perfect example. Like he, that Villanova was the. That's right. Oh, Jay Wright. Yeah. Like they can't, they That's can't right. win the big one. And it's like, all right. Then he just rouses off some national titles. Uh, ah, yeah. all right, Titus. Thank you so much. Everyone can tune in to mostly sports every day and the Mark Titus show where he talks yeah. in depth college basketball. We'll have you back on for the brackets. Uh, this is the best time of year. I'm excited, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, look forward to uh, get the bracket in my hand. Yeah, Thank tell Brendan we said hi. All right. Mark Titus is brought to you by our great friends over at Morgan & Morgan. Today's Firefest segment is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. We had dinner with uh, Dan Morgan the other night. Great dude. Talked to him for a long time. Explained to us some of the, the inner workings behind Morgan & Morgan. He gaslit BFT into thinking he could pass the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. So we were talking about Hank being able to dunk. And he said that I could pass the bar way easier than Hank could be able to, to dunk a basket. Facts. So oh, I'm, I'm going to sue you, Hank, for defamation for saying that I can't pass the bar when I do pass the bar, thanks to our good friends at Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. They have over 100 offices nationwide. They have more than 1,000 lawyers with over $20 billion recovered for over 500,000 clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. Check them out. Morgan & Morgan, if you're ever injured, check Morgan & Morgan out. They will fight for you. They will get you every penny that you're entitled to. That's for the people.com slash PMT or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Just sitting next to Dan Morgan, having him explain some of the cases they were working on, it made me think to myself, if I'm ever injured, I know exactly who I'm calling, and that's Morgan and Morgan. All right, let's wrap up. Hank, Firefest of the Week. Go ahead. I may have. Uh... Oh, no, you're all right. It's been two days. It's been two days. All right, I lost uh, my, my. No, no, go ahead. Say the first one. It's not a fire fest because it's been two days. You can't have to be a fire fest two days. You have nine months. Is it nine months? You have 10 months. Oh, uh, not basically nine. No, I mean, I've got a lot of people reaching out. I've actually got a lot of positive reinforcements, which I appreciate. I uh, a lot of good, good advice. Um, what? Be a, have a different. Mom no, I got to I got to that's the thing. I'm athletic. I just haven't been athletic. <laughs> <laughs> what is My baseline is so low. I've chosen not to do athletic things for the last couple of years, give or take 10. Uh but it's it, it exists inside me. I like the belief in yourself, but also you don't have that belief in yourself cuz you're thinking about not doing it. He's already practicing his three-point shot. 
No, I'm not. I'm 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 going hard to dunk. When are you gonna transition to threes? Summer. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is. Plan. It, it's gonna interfere with your golfing, which is a real problem. I don't think so because I think it's like good. I need to. I what I've learned, which was surprising, was that obviously you have to train legs. Obviously, you also have to train your hips and your shoulders. Which I'm always on the search for boulders for shoulders. You got to train your shoulders heavy so that you have good. Like, that's a big part of dunking. I've learned a lot about dunking in the past couple of days. What would you say the percentage of positive feedback to negative feedback has been? That I've read? I've read 100% negative. Well, I only read the one, like, I just kind of block out the negative ones. Uh -huh. So you're in the... I've, the one that I've noticed, oh, overwhelming. You're in the information gathering portion of this uh, journey. Knees over, knees over legs. Knees over shins. Knees over, knees over feet. There's an Instagram account oh, uh, yeah. following him. And I downloaded a program. There's a lot, obviously, a lot of this is probably a These are all things thing. that you've done on your phone. He's an information gathering. No, I downloaded, I got a laptop. I have a whole workout program. Oh, you I found it. Started. Um, yeah, I found my laptop. I'm excited. I'm excited for the challenge. I think it's going to help everything. I'm going to be athletic. I'm going to be a better golfer, healthier. What point healthier. do you think you're going to get injured? We'll see about that. Okay, because it wouldn't be the worst if you once had I get injured, like a then Tom it's all. Skura. Once I get injured, it's all like break your legs, oh, yeah. ACL, Just make sure it's on camera. arm. I also was thinking, I should get something if I do both. What? Like, what if I now you think you can do both and hit twenty threes? No, well, then you got to put something else up. I already. You I'm already over leveraged. Do you want to double down? No. Twenty thousand dollars. No, because I can't. The bet is if I couldn't do either. So obviously, all right. If you if you can do if you do both, then um, careful. I was gonna say if you do both, we'll, we'll both get cats. And if you can't, you have to get a cat. No. Okay. How about if you do both, you get to go on a month long golf vacation. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. No. Wait. No. Wait. No. Wait. But no. but if you but if <laughs> no. you can't do it. <laughs> Then you have to pay us ten percent of your salary for the next five years, every paycheck. <laughs> you know what? We'll I'll double I'll double the the price. So I'll give you twenty grand if you can't do both. Then you have to get the it soul patch. Doesn't matter. Soul what? patch. Yeah. Soul it's patch. It's not going to happen. It's not soul going patch. to happen. Soul patch. Hank, you have an extra day to prepare. Soul patch. February twenty ninth. Good point, Jay. That's true. Spins on. <laughs> soul patch. All right, we're good. Oh, oh that's, that's weird. By the way, tune in on Monday. We have Derek White and Peyton Pritchard here, and Hank makes a crazy soul patch bet. Nah, absolutely not. <laughs> Sounded like you did. No. Um, and my car You're not going to get either of these. Good. Keep it coming. Okay. You're not going to get either of these. I'm going to... I just have to, like, basically change my entire lifestyle, way of thinking... <laughs> And every, you know, every, yeah, you have to become a new done. person. Yeah, you're Which not it, gonna get either. But of once these. I do that, then it's gonna happen. New DNA. No, my DNA is there. It's just been, you know, bogged down by the, all the trash I consume. Mm. It is gonna be tough to learn how to dunk when you're golfing all summer. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I mean, we have, a, we have walking? a we have a basketball court in our. I will I will walk on the course. PFT. We brought up. Uh, the rollerblading thing, and I was like, absolutely not. And then I was like, you know what? My legs. As a person who's training his legs, I am so down to do rollerblade from L.A. to San Diego. So so, so getting a, a country club membership that you're probably want to – you're going to want to use that quite a bit this summer, am I right? You, you work in a, in a gym. I just have to come to work, which I guess I will do now. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, you, do, you have to change everything about yourself. Yeah. And then you'll be able to dunk. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I might – both of my car key batteries are dead. Dude, you can give me your car keys. Do you have a thing? It's it. You can change it. Do you have the battery? It, I mean, it's probably one that you can buy easily, or they probably have it in the control room. That'd be clutch. I also don't know how to open the thing. So, how have you been getting into your car? Key? The key, but it's a process. Yeah, it's like a annoying. You can hook it up to a potato too. I think. Oh damn! You drive a Rolls Royce? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, let's see. I like the pussy wagon keychain you got on there. It's this thing, Hank. You just got to get this open. Do you know that it, it's like right? It's sitting right here. So you get that open, and then you can. Uh, what if I hit the panic button? Don't do that. 
If you get that open, there's it's it's like a watch battery. Easy. All right, Firefest solved. Yeah, just so go. no Firefest for me this week. It's been a- oh wow, okay, nice. I didn't know you were driving Rolls Royce. Fucking stunting on us. Cheesesteak. Uh, PFT. I got a couple Firefests. Uh, the first one is the Rick Pitino stalkers back. Oh yeah. So uh, we talked about Coach, and apparently he uh, he lit a fire under his player's ass. Yeah. So uh, Rick Pitino's. I think he's a great coach, and I think he didn't say anything wrong. We should all chill out. Yeah, he texted me twice, we need and to, he also gave me a date. We need to respect Rick Pitino, as we always. Have. I like Rick Pitino. I want him on the podcast. St. John's, if you're if you're uh, listening, please have Rick Pitino come on the podcast. We'd love to have him come on the podcast. Yeah, come on. Okay, come, see you're doing it again. No, come right another text. I'm come, gonna get another text. Come right on this podcast. This guy's been texting me for like ten years. I hope he does. Uh, well, yeah, he's texting me, not you. We might get killed. We might get killed. If we I get... should just give him your number. Yeah. No, don't do that. I tracked him down in Final Four. Yeah, that's right. Tell yeah. that story. Yeah. He no-showed. Yeah, he didn't, didn't no-showed. Um, but then he was like, you sent your goons. There. I don't know. So maybe he did show. M- Max does give goon vibes. Yeah. yeah. He is our goon. <laughs> Wearing a track suit. Either way, I like Rick Pitino. We have, we, listen, we make jokes about everyone on this podcast, including ourselves, so... Uh, Rick Pitino, please come on the pod. It's actually my my lifelong dream to last thirteen seconds. That's stolen valor of a of a firefest because he's texting me. Well, he, he he was texting you about something that I said on the pod. Yeah, but he was he then followed up and texted me more pointedly. Uh, and then my other my other firefest is we've got March Madness coming up, Final Four, which also means it's uh time well, for the. By the way, the, the soccer. Let's just great AWL. Yeah, it's every show. Yeah, so I just want to at least him. give him some credit for that. Yeah, he loves. Thank the, you. He loves thank the program. You for that yes, thank you. Because it's almost instant when we say something. So I want to say, like, I really, I know you want us dead. I think, uh, but do appreciate you subscribing and listening to every episode. Yes, uh, my other fire fest is March Madness coming up. Final Four is coming up, uh, which also means the Hong Kong Sevens tournaments coming up. The rugby tournament in Hong Kong that I went to yeah. a few years ago. Donnie's been texting me pretty constantly being like, hey, are you going to come? And then now recently pivoted to, well, who should who from Barstool should come with me if I'm going to go over there? It's the last year that they're, they're going to have the South Stand set up, the last year where it's going to be – it's you probably going to go. continue to be a go. Zoom. What day is and it? I, it's go. the exact weekend of the Final Four. We'll do one Zoom on Sunday. And it was – Listen, it was a lot of fun last time, and the first thing I said when I came back is it was so much fun. In fact, it was so much fun that I'm never going to do it again in my life. Uh, I've been I've been starting to think about doing it. Why don't you just go? Because last time you went, wh- wh- when did you leave? I left, I think it was like early on the Thursday before the Final Four. Okay. Because when you fly there, it takes like 18 hours. Right. And then when you're there, it's an exact 12-hour time difference. So when you guys are taping the show at night, it'll probably be... 11 midnight yeah that's tough and then that would be 11 o'clock in the morning and we might get and also now that i'm putting these two stories together that'd be interesting that you somehow are out of the country when we're in a very public spot at the final four where rick patino stalker come get us huh it would be interesting howard these are these are unrelated unrelated instances howard uh but also you could do another segment with an athlete who tries to take my job in case i die on the trip yeah. George Kittle did that last time. Yeah, we did. We could. I'll just say, George, you're a great guy. Uh, stick to football. I don't think you can fill these shoes. Uh, but I'm thinking about it. I will make a decision by the end of the week whether or not I'm going to go. Max is shaking his head being like, don't go. You have no idea how fun it was, Max. Yeah. I We just, we just got oblos. I just, we got oblos. What oblos? We just got oblos. It sounds like you're a hater. No. Sounds like you don't want to see me live my best life. No, no. We got oblos. I'll make my final decision by tomorrow whether or not I'm going. If I don't go, I I feel like Mincy would be a great person to go over there with Donnie. Oh, man. I don't know if he might be like Elvis. He might not be able to go out of the country. That's true. Mincy in Hong Kong would be special, though. Yeah, it would. That is a good replacement. So very good replacement. Maybe I'll have him wear a wig and sunglasses. He can, I mean, he does Pat Mahomes. Maybe he can be PFT. He could easily do it. Uh, so yeah, but I do want to go. I've been, I've been feeling the itch recently and it's like, that's such a fun weekend. A lot of rugby. It's just a blast. It's one of the itch. I know. I, if I go, if I go, I'm not going to take MDMA again. 
That's a lie. I said that's the first and only time I do that. That's a lie. That's like I'm, saying Hank's going to dunk. I'm not a drug guy. Uh, even though when I did go to Qatar with Donnie, I ended up doing acid. Um, but I don't I don't want to do drugs. The reason that I want to go over there has nothing to do with drugs. Mm -hmm. It's just such a fun time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, my fire fest is the Rick Pitino stalkers back texting me. Um, also... I've actually started a real diet. Chef Donnie's cooking for me. I'm a little grumpy, but I'll be okay. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You're you. I was a test. You're the grumpy one because you're sick. You've been sick all week, right in our face. You got the Scottsdale flu. Uh, no, my real fire fest is. Uh, no, actually, I'm not gonna say it because then Hank will use it against me. See what you've done to this podcast, Hank. Yeah. I enjoyed vacation. Okay. Yeah. You know, this always happens. I did get a little. I got the itch though at the end. And also, uh, I'm a big believer. I remember even when I was like a kid and I would go on vacation and I'd be like, I, now I can watch like all the MTV I want. Yeah. And my mom would be like, it's vacation. Go outside. It's like, it's my vacation. Yeah. I should get to do what I want. So like when people are like, stop tweeting about Mincy, you know, uh, doing the, the, what was he on? He was on the crowd, crowd, surfing. crowd surfing or Sydney Sweeney's boobs. It's my vacation. I can tweet about whatever I want. If it's Sydney Sweeney's boobs, that's okay. You should tweet more about the Mountain West on vacation if you really cared about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. But I, I'm a big believer in if your vacation, like if I could do my real vacation, it would just be sitting in a room with a bunch of TVs and gambling on every game. That's my real vacation. That's your job, though. But it would be nice if I could do it just unfettered. Yeah. Uh, yeah, vacation's really nice. It's really nice. I'm not addicted, though, so don't get some thoughts, Hank. I ain't addicted. It was fine. Uh, Jake. Um, remember when I interviewed with you guys, I sent you my website? Yeah. I haven't touched it in years, and I just got a $325 bill for an auto renewal. Oh, mm. so then renew it. Wait, what is well, your it website? It was auto renewal. It was an auto renewal, but Jake I haven't used it. Com? Jake W. Marsh. It was Dude. just a, sh it was, I made it when I was graduating college just as like a real slash resume one-stop shop. Oh my God. Shop. But I haven't touched it in a long time. Sweats. And I and I just spent another three hundred twenty five dollars unknowingly. Yeah. yeah, you got to update this website. I know it's so old. You got to make it flash. Oh, we're on it. Yeah, you yeah. added you added this part. Yeah, but I haven't touched it since like COVID. I think the last time I had it when it was was uh maybe this 2020, 2021. I know that we do some advertising with some of these companies, but like this, we should just be like, hey. Do you, do you want to long, last longer in bed? Just go read Jake Marsh's website. <laughs> like You'll have no problem. Like 90% you'll be a of, stallion. 90% of the work on there is my college work. So <laughs> just I'm either going to deactivate it. You want to fuck or... like a porn star, go to jakewmarsh.com. <laughs> Jake is a diehard New York Yankees fan and loves rooting for his hometown teams in Miami as well. Some of Jake's hobbies include playing golf, tennis, and relaxing with his family. You like chilling with the fam? Yeah. Prior to that, Jake spent two seasons as a play-by-play -play broadcaster of the University of Vermont men's basketball team. His other interests are petting dogs and eating pussy. Yep. Huh. Word, word for word. Huh. You but yeah. Should, you should have we'll a, a positions tab on here. Yeah. <laughs> like like just resume. <laughs> yeah, just have one tab on the website be the Kama Sutra. Yeah, no, it should be it should be an auto generator where you can yeah. hit like hit for a new position. Yeah. And it just pops up a new position. <laughs> I forgot one fire fest. I have one other fire fest. Uh, my last fire fest is I have a really good friend, and he's a crazy, crazy sports fan, and uh, he's in for just an absolute ass kicking on Saturday, and I'm worried about him. Who are who's his team playing? I think they're playing. Is it UConn? Is it going to be nationally televised? Yeah, I think they're playing UConn. This is a no lose situation. What do you mean? It sounds like you guys could lose by a lot. Yes, and if you no, lose so by a lot, no, wreck, it's then a you no lose by win a lot. situation. No, there's a win. There's a situation. So how is it a no lose? It's it's an un because exactly what you're saying. Everyone's expecting Villanova to lose by thirty. If they lose by thirty, it's just what. Oh no, that would be funny. No, if if you get your ass kicked and it's such a prominent game, but that that's what everyone's expecting. You understand that this is the weekend where the nation turns its eyes to college basketball. Favorites. Ah, they're not gonna be fifteen point favorites. It'll be thirteen. Let's take a look real quick. Let's take a look real quick. Old Ken Palm Max has 10. 10. I think 82-72. Uh, 
Yeah, it's okay. gonna be a bad. I actually kind of want to see him. Max, is this I, like I, I could you you want to live stream it? Seventy two sixty. So. <laughs> is this what that, time? What time is it at? Seven o'clock Saturday night. Oh, perfect live streaming <laughs> hours. <laughs> I'll be, come in and live stream with you. It's gonna be an absolute blowout. Is it gonna be a That's must win for you? What must win? No, like this. The, this does absolutely nothing to the committee. It's only positive for the committee. All right, I'm gonna just um who where are you gonna go out Saturday night? Watch it somewhere. Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay, this is this is like the Phillies all over again. What? I'm just gonna pay everyone that you are friends <laughs> with to make sure they send me all the clips. I actually might try to track Max down. Yeah, just stay across the bar incognito. Uh, but like, I'm ex I'm going in ex expecting them to lose by a lot. But in the off chance that the, like, how much how much of the public money do you think is gonna be on UConn? On a Saturday? lot. A lot. You're right. You're right. But there is a lose. And also, if you lose, yes, correct. But <laughs> imagine if Hurley loses imagine after, post, after posting after Broskies? posting that meme. Mm. Oh, you'd it, give him the business. I mean, that would be that would be an all time bad tweet. I'm also excited for the college game day signs that you guys told. The, uh, yeah, Max two sodas. We need a lot of Max two sodas. No, none of them. Max none, had two sodas. No, nobody bring that UConn. to the college game day. Max, Come on, I, Max, I got your back. If anybody brings a Max had two sodas signed to college game day i'm going to have to retweet it so that nobody else does it and be like this person's the only one that can do it anyone else that does it is not creative. i'll go one up pft because i don't want these max has two sodas signs anywhere if anyone does a max has two sodas sign um i at least be a man about it and put your venmo on it mm -hmm. so that i could send you some money yeah I, I want some accountability. I want to know. I wanna, and, and you know what? Heaven, heaven forbid, heaven forbid, somebody dresses up like Max, and then shows it's up. It's also bullshit. And then Gabe shows Day's up the Nova Yukon, and then yeah. shows up with a foam dome with two sodas on either side. Of it. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I I don't want to see any of these Max has two soda signs, but I will pick. In obviously, you know, because it's the two sodas, I'll pick two of my favorite Max has two soda signs, and those people will win a prize on Venmo. <laughs> I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Max has two sodas. Maybe pictures of Sad Max included in it. Mm. So it's best sign wins. Max has two sodas. Uh, okay. Numbers. Eight. 20. 30. 30. 18. Mm. What am I gonna pick? Said forty, Hank. I said forty. I vert. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Pug. Ninety-nine pug. Ninety-nine pug. What was pug talk the other day? That ruled. People just talking about pugs. It's uh, pug's new podcast. <laughs> pug. What was pug talk? Did you get in on it? Ninety-nine pug. They're asking about pug talk. Shane, what do you got? It was trending on Twitter, so I had to get in on it. <laughs> Pug. Who said that? Who said that? Who said it? You didn't sign off. Say Pug. Pug. <laughs> <laughs> I really need headphones. Pug, you're our new big dom. Tell him that. Yeah, I Pug, said that. you're our new big dom. We were looking for a big dom on the show, and I and we were trying to figure it out, and I said, it's got to be you. You're, you're, you're our big dom. That's fine with me, Pug. <laughs> Perfect. You know what? My my only issue with pug is like if you look at pugs in the wild, like that that live in a, a family, um, no house that has one pug only has one pug. Right. You know they always have. Oh, two they come. Pugs. Yeah, they're like cats. They're the cats of dogs. You have to have multiple pugs. Yeah. Uh, Shane, what's your number? Twenty-one. All right, everyone, say their numbers again, real quick. Twenty. Eight, eight, Forty. Eighteen. Seventy-seven. Ninety-nine pug. <laughs> Three. I just want to see here it again. Oof. 80. Mm. 80. All right, see everyone on Monday. Love you guys.